<laughs> I would be first, but I took an arrow to the knee. It's fine, Bacon, you get to be like a first adjudicator with me. It's like you and I just watching the crowds leaping forth to grab that flag. It's like Fall Guys, if the very first thing you had to do was run for the crown. <laughs> Wolfgrad, how are you doing? Watto and welcome! First, still up for grabs. There's everything to play for and no reason to play. It's time for the first. Anyway, Wolfgrad Bacon, how are you doing? I am still emotionally exhausted from yesterday and more things happen. More things happen. Uh, to seven sunless days, I say first! Well played. Update the boards. Did I say seven sunless seas or seven sunless days? I think I said seas. Man. Dyslexic brain is weird. Oh, well, Vern Float, let's make it a good, let's make it a tight ten, shall we? <laughs> How are you doing, friend? Uh, and if you're wondering, yes, this is Jazzy Moose. Uh, still waiting. Seven's on the Seas is your pirate sona. There we go. And also, a heckin' marathon of an excellent game. Cable situation has become so dire at home. We have one good functioning USB C cable, which Fiona and I are sharing as a joint custody between uh, my controller and Fiona's phone. Uh, we've got one other cable that just kind of sort of works. Like, it's really phoning it in at this point. Anyway, how are you doing? Uh, seven Sunless, I have updated the board. You are now joint uh, contenders with everybody else in there. Oh, sorry, it's getting into the uh, stuff that'll get me uh, muted. Oh, well, lovely. Um, Sunless. You know what? Doing solid. Yesterday was that trifecta of like what I felt was a really good stream in terms of like what we did and what we talked about and things like that. And I got fucking destroyed emotionally by the long shit in a good way. Uh, today, uh, an incredibly kind gift showed up. Um, and I don't know if the person in question wants to be known or what have you, but. Um, yeah, someone sent me basically a behemoth of a graphics card. Like, we're talking like ray tracing level nonsense. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I don't know. Yesterday was a lot, and I don't know how much, like, say, uh, emotional energy. Oh, we're cool! Uh, j has installed a 470. Uh, this is a 3060. And it is... It is very there. I, I, I obviously I said thank you to the person who sent it. And again, I don't know if they want to be known. Uh, I should have really asked that. Eremon, Watto, and welcome. Hello, hello. Coming in, friend. Coming in. Man, Dinobot's on form today. <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, Jam, make yourself a cup of what you fancy, kick back. It is my job to entertain you post-work, and by Joe, I'm going to do it. Uh, although, the only thing I will put to the crowd today is... Uh... I don't have a good name for today's uh, stream, comparable to the previous one. Captain on the bridge. Oh. So, quick drive around downtown Seattle tonight, is it? Hell yeah. Like, proper drift wiggly approach. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Shackle, how are you doing, friend? Obviously, I... I don't know. The tier three subs are massive, right? Like, that's 25 bucks a month. 65 months is an amount of time that my brain refuses to turn into any sensible, measurable amount. Combining these two things together makes my brain kind of like short circuit. So I try and come up with something witty or pithy to say as a thank you. I got nothing. I got nothing. Just thank you. All right. Just thank you. And I hope you're doing splendid. You know, love to you and yours and all that. Um. <laughs> If it helps, it's five by five, five years, five months. Okay. Five years, five months. Oh. I mean, next month's going to be our sixth year anniversary, so holy fucking a bin bag. <sighs> but anyway, Jackal, thank you. All right, just thank you. Uh, and Bacon, I was pondering it, and it was like... I mean, I, I talked about it yesterday. You don't need to go into just the sheer amount of shit that's been happening, but it was more a case of, like, trying to organize other people was more than I had bandwidth for, you know what I mean? Uh, when we started having, like, the, the technical problems with the rig and the hard drive and stuff like that, it was combined with everything that's been going on IRL, it was just overwhelming. So you're right, like, I should have taken you up on the offer. Um, and, you know, I'll probably need people's help a lot. This is going to be a hard fucking year, but... What's worse than a brain than cats and dogs? I don't know. Hailing taxis. <laughs> That's a good one. Araman, I'll be honest with you. I've never heard that. Anyway, Dustin. What ho and welcome. Araman. What ho and welcome. Shackle. What ho and welcome. How was that? That was pretty good. I went for like a, like a trilogy there. <laughs> Uh, so Dustin, and those of you that are pun inclined, I need a better title for today's Pacific Drive. I came up with Crypt of the Necro Driver, which is fine, but it doesn't quite have the same pithiness of the vanishing of Ethan's car, uh, which was last week's one. Oh god, no one wants double will. Oh, Chorus, what and welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, Chorus, if you get the chance to watch the um, uh, the Elden Ring VOD from the bits you missed yesterday, I think you're going to be very proud of me. Uh, although I do find myself um, in a strange little... I don't want to say rut in Elden Ring. Like, I came into that game and I was like, I want big chunky sword. I know I can get full-on, like, Dragon Slayer from Berserk-style sword. And then I got the sword with the anime bullshit, and I'm like, fuck, I'm really enjoying the anime bullshit. So I either need to find something that's more anime, or I need to accept that I have to just like keep the Goomba stomp. I don't know. I still need to get my guy a little bit more strong because he's on heavy load with the gut sword, but that's just a matter of time, right? But yeah, um, yeah, Chonris, I was trying to think of Final Fantasy XV, but it's a bit too lengthy, and that's, like, XV is famous for the car, the kind of, like, the fifth member of the band, like, uh, like Dark Ringo, if you will. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Dark Ringo has been one of my favourite memes of the week. Or War Ringo, oh, what was it, or Warongo, as he's known. Lost Flowers, what's over? You know what? Don't get me wrong. I love this playlist. 
There we go. I don't know. That, it was a bit too intense for what's going to be a day of, like, road tripping. Get them smooth jams going. <laughs> Lance, well played. You've got to be more prompto with the Final Fantasy XV puns. Uh, premium anomalous transmission. Not bad, not bad. We can, like, I was trying to think of, like, what's, like, an indie darling that we can make car puns about? Uh, you know what, Wolfgrad? I guess it's because, like, Cerveza Crystal... Cerveza Crystal is good, and you've brought out some bangers, but... Man, the, the corporate memosphere got to that way too fast. Yeah, well, Anzo, you've got to have, like, a, like a curve. You can't just be... You can't just be starting with chaos. You can't just start with chaos and stay there. It's got to go up. And then come down. Uh, Captain Stephanie Barnes, what's her welcome, hello, hello! The regalia in Centralia. Not bad, not bad. We can definitely do this though. So yeah, trying to come up with like a indie game, like an indie game darling car pun. Uh, hang on, what were the, the last two we had for Pacific Drive were absolute bangers. Look, I understand, I'm outsourcing my job here. This is... This is absolutely tell terrible. All right, Hell Drivers is good, but like Crypt of the Necro Driver, I don't know. Okay, it's definitely on there because the two we've had so far is the Vanishing of Ethan's Car and What Remains of My Summer Car, which was kind of a bit of a double. Hell Drivers is good. <laughs> you know what, Jan? Let's put it like that. Yeah, audience participation. Ah, uh, Chauneris, that's feckin' great. I missed that. God, I'm so behind on so many things. I used to be very, very uh, on the pulse of, uh, of what was Nerdcore. Cardew Valley! Cardew Valley! Thank you! Lost Flowers from the halfway line. That's a pun. Boosh. <laughs> and caffeine. What? Oh, and welcome. Sometimes you just gotta, you just gotta get that resonance. Kaji Valley. Uh, Nick, what? Oh, and welcome. And Angelos. Um, hello, hello, all of you. Greetings, friends. How are you all doing? <sighs> so I'm trying to find people that remember a service called Teletext um, because uh, I got sent a key for a puzzle game based on Teletext. It's called uh, Telefax. Um, and this is surprisingly... Hey! Given the war, Perhaps for next week, Hotel Pacifica. Ooh, okay, I like that, I like that. And Shackle, thank you for the 200 friend. Uh, so is it just me and Angelos that remembers Teletext? <laughs> Alice, I haven't heard that name in years. Well, I thought, I, I saw it come across my feed on Keymailer and I was like, <laughs> My dad friend is dealing with his kids being upset about his puberty puns. He calls them their groaning pains. <laughs> well played. So, Akira Zero, thank you for the 800. Like, that's eight bucks keeping us going. That's that's not a small amount. And also, I didn't get the chance to say, because I didn't see it until well after, but seriously, thank you. All right? Also, when slash if Scotty gets in, I need to say a massive thank you to them. Scotty snuck in a huge online. donation. Sensors and none online. of you told me. Even Fiona. Even Fiona didn't say anything until well after stream. Half a century? Damn. Yeah. You yeah. seem to forget that I'm always watching the stream. <laughs> you love to tell me things that happen, and I'm like, yeah, I know. I was there. Well, as I don't have anybody else to tell. The guinea pigs, you know, unless I'm feeding them, they don't give me the fucking time of day. 
I'm not cool enough for them anymore. <laughs> no, really, thank you for 50 months. Uh, that is a half century. And we'll be... Yeah, we'll be on the tipping point of uh, the, the second act of the Longship next month. April 6th, Longship Day. Let's go, baby! Um. Well, I find the whole thing feckin' fascinating. Oh, sorry, if you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about. So, uh, this is the game. Now, I don't know if it's any good. I haven't had the chance to put any hours into it. But this is the title. And it's called uh, T-Fax Cold Case. And it is absolutely classic Teletext. Now, if you're wondering what in the fuck we're talking about, uh, Teletext was a service in the UK, which was essentially like a... I don't know. It was like an informational overlay that you could utilize via your telly um you would have these colored buttons on your remote that would allow you to like move around and select stuff uh, and there would be information on like the weather local news like national news there's even like a comic called turn of the worm which i obsessed over as a kid um and i'd kind of forgotten about its existence i couldn't even tell you how it is that that works um, someone saying that, like, it was something to do with, like, a handful of pixels that would transmit the information, but I cannot really remember. Uh, and the fact that someone has made, like, a puzzle game out of this, I don't know if it's horror. Um... <laughs> no, Angelus, I actually had to Google Turn the Worm before stream. Because I needed to know if I was having like a fucking Mandela effect, like time travel bollocks or what have you. Turn the Worm was a real comic. It was on teletext. Essentially the original webcomic. And Vanderbeast, thank you for filling the pint lot. I, you lot blew the bloody doors off yesterday, so please do not feel like... Yeah. Thank you, sorry, that's what I meant to say. Still, I'm I'm still recovering from yesterday. Um, but yeah, it's it's such a specific piece of British history turned into such a niche indie game that I'm like, I don't know if I could stream it because I it's too British. But God, what a fascinating thing. Anyway, so that's what's been. Uh, Bacon, my noggin this morning. How are you all doing? Uh, BAFTA put out the list of uh, nominations today. Um, I can't comment on the process, but I can say that I can't help but notice that Lethal Company was snubbed for multiplayer, but like Call of Duty was in and I'm like come now and thankfully shitty wizard game wasn't put in for anything of value it is in for animation which it won't win because Spider-Man 2 but now obviously it's gonna be a Baldur's Gate 3 clean sweep I understand it but it just you know as a BAFTA member I was like yo there were some really good titles that seem to have been snubbed in favour of the triple A's. But I have no say in the process and whatnot. Oh no, and actually, having played at least a uh, buttload of Divinity 2, like, I think Divinity, uh, sorry, Divinity, Baldur's Gate's slot in the multiplayer is incredibly valid. Like, I think that's legit. Like, Baldur's Gate deserves the attention and um, uh, critical respect that it has got. Call of Duty does not deserve that. And, I don't know. I, we don't need to go down the award ceremony conversation thread. It's just, last year was banging for indie games as well. 
and a lot of the things that I'm seeing in slots for the BAFTA Awards really don't deserve it. But that wasn't that wasn't something that uh, I was directly asked for. What was lovely though is the uh, the BAFTA Games like hosting crew is a wonderful diverse cast of like lovely industry individuals. So I think like Lucy James is heading up like the the main slot and. I wouldn't claim to be super friends with Lucy, but I've known them in and around the industry for a long time, and they're fucking cool people. So, that's one thing I can say, is comparable to the Game Awards, which was a mayonnaise buffet. At least BAFTA's got, like, not... BAFTA was like, shit, what if we, what if we got not white guys to host our award show? <gasps> Le gasp! Anyway. Oh yeah, no, and Jamami, I will say, like, at least in the UK, like, BAFTA's open doors, you know, I have never known a, like, a Jeff Keighley Game Awards award to really do anything except for make Keighley like you more, but I will say, like, working on a game that won a BAFTA has fucking helped me loads. Uh, Vernon Flo, uh, the BAFTA awards will feature Timothy Charlemagne. Uh, he doesn't know why he's there, we don't know why he's there. Honestly, no one's really quite sure how he entered the room or how he left. I think it might be beyond his control anymore. Scotty! I don't know if you saw my message. Scotty, thank you so much yesterday. Uh, I didn't see your donation until after stream. Fiona did, and didn't rat you out. So, uh, you. All I'm gonna say is thank you. All right. I will admit I did get worried yesterday that I was gonna have to actually plan this fucking shark tank. Not the TV show Shark Tank, but the in the tank with sharks. I don't know. I saw Camille pop up and I was like, no. but, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, as much as Fiona was joking about giving me a whole bunch of, like, dog tranquilizers, you and I both know if I've got to wear any kind of breathing apparatus, I can't be taking... I can't be taking shitloads of drugs, and I can't get shit-faced. Because that's how you end up drowning. <laughs> I like that, Lance. Coming and going like a gangrel. Slimming in the floorboards. For when you need your fursona to have a bit of an edge. Gangrel. But when you really wanted to play werewolf, but the dungeon master didn't let you. Gang. <laughs> Sorry. Actually, I wonder if the devil's lettuce will be fine. Maybe you can just like hotbox my breathing apparatus. Oh. Anyway, sorry. Just um. The other games industry news has been weird. Um, I was loath to give any oxygen to the... I always want to call it Sweet Baby Ray. Um, I, I was loath to give uh, any oxygen to it, but it looks like, unfortunately, it's rolling out critical mass. Um, and I don't know if we necessarily need to talk about it, but just... Something to remind, not necessarily for your good selves, but... Right now, terrible people need oxygen to sustain their awful media empires. And sometimes rallying against something only fuels its fire. Um, okay, I guess right, we'll, we'll cover it, but... Like I said, I'm I'm loathed to give oxygen to this fire, you know what I mean? Um, okay, so the TLDR is, there is a narrative development consultants and company called Sweet Baby. My brain always wants to say Sweet Baby Rays. That's a barbecue sauce. I have brain rot. This has been well documented. And, um, well, so, Nick, I don't want to start calling it that. Because again, this is one of those things I'm trying to... 
I, I don't know in what capacity, but it's... Anyway, so let me give you the, the TLDR. Uh, Sweet Baby is a consultancy company that helps with uh, diversity consultancy. Um, so in the same way that like Kate Edwards is someone that you uh, would bring on board for cultural consultancy, like if your game is set in an Arabic company, making sure that you're using proper Arabic and not just flip reverse co like Coca-Cola adverts, as fucking COD has done in the past. But that's another story. Uh, Sweet Baby is the people you bring in that, you know, if everybody in your studio looks like me, but you want to make a game with good representation, making sure that you're not leading into harmful stereotypes, that you're representing varying groups correctly, varying you know, genders and sexualities without being accidentally a massive piece of shit. So yeah. Um, they've been kicking around since 2018. Uh, they've been brought in on a lot of like large scale games, uh, but they have worked with some indie teams as well. Uh, the TLDR is that there was a uh, there was a group on Steam that attempted to basically warn people of any game that this consultancy group had worked on. You know, it was some real some real like Steam brain rot type stuff. The problem is that in the last like we can change it's escalating very very quickly. Um, the team at Sweet Baby tried to have the group shut down for being a hate group on Steam. This leaked and has sparked a whole bunch of nonsense. And this is the point where I wanted to start, like, acknowledging how different things are. See, I don't want to describe this as, as Gamergate 2.0. Um, the internet is in a horrible, horrible flux at the moment. Hopefully it gets better. You know, we have our little uh, oasis here. I quite like that. But I, you know, with Twitter basically now being an unregulated free-for-all, um, the town square is full of loud assholes. But the thing that's changed since then is the React farm has become a thing. Uh, you all remember last year when I was like, hey, maybe don't support you know, Joanne and her rampant transphobia. And people were like, you're telling me not to play a video game? How fucking dare you? And one thing that was interesting about watching all of that was how my little video got run through all of these like awful individuals on the React train, right? I was the content for them to be like, oh, I can't believe this game. <laughs> um, actually, if you want a really good case study, uh, Asma Gold, is just that. Like, guy's an awful piece of shit. I hope he proves himself. <laughs> I hope he proves himself many, many times. Anyway, what's interesting about these particular shitty people is they require fuel for the fire, right? And the problem is, is that fuel burns very quickly. There is this looping cycle, and right now the sweet baby stuff is the current fuel for the fire. And what I'm noticing is that by both the attention that this situation has gotten, the articles written about it, the industry reaction is creating more fuel than prior. You know? It's very, very interesting to read about a lot of uh, individuals who were very, very young when Gamergate went down, who kind of see this as their chance to fight back against terrible people. Unfortunately, it is creating more fuel in this situation. Um, and I'm fucking... <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think I'm just venting to you all. There's nothing really to be doing. This is the equivalent of me yelling at the tides. But, you know, we went through... This will be a similar... If this escalates, it will be a similar beast. It will be extremely different. For those that didn't go through it the first time, Gamergate was a targeted attack on a dev that spiraled out of control at a time when, you know, there was a lot of... There was a lot of user frustration with what was perceived as, like, um, journalistic gamer... The game's journalistic culture. Um, 
it was a very, very carefully coordinated attack that sparked a thousand shitty neckbeards. And we're still feeling the effects of it. Like, I was talking to um, some industry friendos this morning, and I was like, I've had to cut ties with people because I found out that even in the year of Waluigi 2020, they were still like, yeah, Game Gate was a great idea and I love it. I broke my heart as well because I was working on something really cool with a guy. And then he posted like a Gamergate 15th anniversary post of how great and wonderful and good they were for winning the battle. I was like, fuck are you talking about? Mate, you're nearly 50, fuck off! So... <sighs> anyway, it's... It's a very different situation now, as you well know. Games journalists do not have the same kind of stability or the same kind of influence that they once had. They are still a part of the ecosystem, but you have to understand, like, in terms of influence and in terms of power, journos have been supplanted by these huge voices in content creation. They are not... Okay, so jumping back, like, Angelus, that's a valid fear. During Gamergate, uh, I wanted to get really fighty. Obviously, I was still at the creative assembly. I wanted to take a stand. I wanted to go against these people. And one of my co-workers took me aside and was like, look, you can't do this. Because if you do, they won't go after you. They will go after your femme-presenting co-workers and they'll go after them for years. Like, for you, you get to make a stand and feel good about yourself. But you, you're going to make people's lives miserable. And... Putting a target on your back when you don't have a huge community or a huge uh, organization to protect you is awful. Now, the good thing about this is that it has a very, very strong chance of just puttering out. You know, I, I hate to say it, like the people of Sweet Baby are basically now in for hell on earth. Should they have tried to have the group shut down? No, they never should have acknowledged them in any written or recordable form. But it's happened now. Cat's out of the bag, fire's out of my pants. Wait, hang on. <laughs> um, if it reaches a point where, you know, we as a squad need to start, like, making a stand against this, if it does end up catching fire really badly, you know, as I've said, like, just like with, you know, Joanne and the Wizard Wankers, you know, it's something that, you know, the Longship as a whole will plan, we will lock down, we will be ready. So, just so long as you all know, this isn't gonna, you're not gonna have to worry about coming under siege here. But also, the situation has changed. Oh yeah, Lance, and I remember that. I remember that. I guess what I'm saying is that don't get baited into a fight early. Because as someone who's been like the subject of attack campaigns, the thing that nobody tells you is like every argument against you is stupid. But there's thousands of them constantly, you know. As yeah, as Nick says, keep your powder dry. Um, if you start seeing bots reposting to your stuff, if you start seeing like shady fuckers, lock your shit down. You don't owe anyone discussion. You don't owe anyone oxygen, right? Just when you realise that you are their content that you standing up for what you believe in, you putting forth the idea that, hey, maybe everybody has a space in games, that you as a target are content for them, you are fuel for the fire. It's not like two forces fighting back against each other. You all know this. Um, so yeah, again, I apologize for bringing this in like early on. I just kind of wanted to, to get it out there because the flip side of this kind of stuff is games industry news happens during the week. Asshole drama happens during the weekend. I 
forget who uh, made the quote, but it's uh, never fight with an idiot. They'll drag drag you down to your to their level and beat you with experience. Uh, and again, yeah. Uh, Nick, that's a great way of putting it. Your time is more valuable than theirs. You don't owe them any of that. What well, no, so and Edwin, this is why I'm, I'm not calling it Gamergate 2.0. This isn't a concerned attack. This is a group of just a group of Steam users, and it has exploded. But it's exploded because there is a there is a, a reaction mill of white guys reacting to stuff that needs fuel for the fire, and this is the current fuel. Right? Oh, is it a Mark Twain quote? Huh. Exactly, Lance. That is the one good thing about the reaction mill is because there's so much competition in shitty white guy YouTube or shitty white guy Twitch that they have to burn through content faster. Like, eventually, it's it's the alligator thing, right? They'll not... The amount of drama required to sustain these shitty people will be more than they can gain in a in a week. And yeah, it was so fascinating because, like... Again, going back to the Joanne situation from last year, you know, fucking what's his face? Oh, the ball bag. He looks like a poster child for incest. Um, nasally wanker. Ah, uh, you know what? I forgot his name, and that's not a bad thing. Anyway, it was some wanky pundit. Uh. And even, it got so far as to be being mentioned by, like, you know, alt-right speaking wankers. Now, back in the 2010s, that would have basically marked me for life, right? I would have been one of them. But honestly, they forgot about us within, like, two, three months, because they have to move on to the next one. Yeah, Alvis Kestrel. <laughs> Well, you know what, puns? Honestly, I think we're at the end of it. Um, the thing to take away from the, the Sweet Baby situation is that it isn't as bad as last time, and provided there's not anything... There aren't any huge logs thrown in the fire, this thing will burn itself out in, like, a week or two. Sadly for the people at Sweet Baby, they're going to be fighting this now forever. Unfortunately, they have now locked themselves in and this is a really good example of why not engaging is still a power move, but... Uh. Okay. Uh, so puns, the TLDR, they're a consultancy company, they do diversity consultancy, and they found themselves in the crosshairs of shitty people, and that's it. Um, apologies again for bringing it up, it was just one of those that... Shit is hard right now, across the board. We are in the churn, not just in the games industry, but in a whole bunch of spaces. And... There are a lot of people peddling hopelessness. And I don't want that to get to you lot, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying inoculate. I'm not saying that uh, let the bad people win. I'm saying let's... Yeah. Let's... Let's not let the shadows of history loom over us. Rebellions are built on hope. You know who said that? Fucking Care Bears. They kill people. And that Lance, it is interesting again how many little users understand of what people do on games, but that's not the story. Anyway, uh, that was all that really needs kind of going into that one. Um, and again, I do hope that what you take from this is not batten down your fucking hatches. 
Um, the takeaway from this is it's this isn't history repeating itself. We're all right, we're gonna be all right. So, articulating onto happier topics, um, the sequel to Valiant Hearts dropped today out of nowhere. Um, and if you hadn't heard of that one, uh, Valiant Hearts was a World War One 2D, like hand-drawn 2D, almost Metal Slug type game that was one of the best examples of emotional whiplash I've encountered. And they made a sequel about it. I forget the uh, Twitch does the monthly recaps. Uh, so, Chorus, apparently the Capcom showcase went so well. Uh, oh, and whoever that was, second thing. Uh, apparently the Capcom showcase of Dragon's Dogma 2 went so well. Capcom's prices are, stock prices are going up. Now, obviously, we're not, you know, pro stonks here. But, like, Dragon's Dogma causes a spike in stock price? Fucking y'all! Welcome to the future, I guess. Oh, it was Vern. Vern caused the uh, the spike in Capcom stocks. I should have known. Uh, and Nick, as much as I hate IGN, um, the outfit, not the people. Um, it's really you can't underestimate. Sorry, I know you know this, Nick, but to all of your good selves. Uh, hey, but you. Some corgi combo juggling there. <laughs> Sorry, thank you kindly. How are you doing? Uh, but no, uh, Nick, it's really good to see South Park Snow Day getting coverage. Um, in other good and happy news, uh, so Renee, who has been uh, a, a quiet long shippian supporter uh, and games industry legend, released uh, Potions of Curious Tale today, which is over in our friends' games. Uh, they also, with other friends of ours, made a live-action launch trailer, which is just adorable. Uh, that's over in Video Drive if you want to check it out. Uh, and, on the subject of videos, uh, so the Fallout trailer, the official, the official official trailer dropped today, and... I'm, I'm excited. I'm... I... It feels like a tasting menu of the best things from 3 and 4 kind of blended together, and I'm down for that. Matt Berry plays a robot. Um, they acknowledge rampant amount of drug use from ghouls, like, dog meat's in it. I will admit seeing, like, the Brotherhood of Steel, like, airship carrier was like, oh. And it's really fascinating that they seem to have encapsulated the difference between like vault life and you know the the life on the surface so well yeah oh sorry scotty was saying that it's a real shame that so much rest on what ign says it's no news is bad news, and, you know, coverage can always be turned around. It's just, it's frustrating that sometimes IGN will just fart something out without really reading it through or thinking it through, and then teams have to then spend so much time fighting against that. It's very frustrating. And it's like, for every good thing that people within IGN put out, like the good investigative articles, the good things exploring, like, what video games mean to us, for every one of those, there's a fucking... Uh, what's his name? Destin uh, opinion piece that shits on indie devs. You know? I wouldn't... I would be sad for my friends who would be out of work, but I wouldn't mourn the loss of IGN. Uh, that sounds fucking great. 
the Volkswagen. Fuck, that's good. Uh, sorry, uh, Angelos was just sharing. Somebody made a um, uh, Fallout Vault side styled um, station wagon for Pacific Drive. Um, and again, like, I just, I just want to take, I just want to take a second to say, like, the breadth and depth of games that we are experiencing already, and we're barely into March, is incredible. They are apparently selling like hotcakes. Like, for all this that we've suffered, um, all the opinion pieces and soapbox rants, uh, all the fucking corporate wankery, games as an art medium have never been stronger. And that is wild. That's a great thing. You know? Because, um, yeah, looking on my... Looking on my... Uh, my great big schedule... Oh, just as an FYI, uh, we'll be doing a stream of Ocean's of Curious Tale probably on Tuesday. Because um, one, I wanted to see if I could get Renee on the line just to talk about the experience of going through it. And if we're doing that, I don't want to... Launch day for any dev is very stressful. Um, and next week's going to be a weird one. <laughs> Um, but next month we've got the Fallout London, the complete overhaul mod, um, which you better believe I'm playing. Like, I I lay claim to Fallout Landing. Do 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 apples and pears. <laughs> the game is something like crazy. Won't someone please think of the live services? Well, that's the thing. Live service games are doing great. It's just. One, users don't want live service monetization shoehorned into games that doesn't fit. And two, they don't want the same thing. You can't sell me Destiny 2. I'm already playing Destiny 2. All right? Shouldn't. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> and Hookshot, don't worry. We'll, we'll... We'll be there for you. We can be your, uh, you know, emotional support fan base for launch day. We got you. Um, I will say, Legend, one of the things that I've, that's been on the docket for like three, four years is there's a bunch of really good conversion mods for Fallout 4 that turn Night into a fucking horror game. Like a really good horror game. And I've been very much considering that. Well, uh, Alice was saying, I'm not even going to say people want Helldivers 2 because they have that. Well, Helldivers 2, depending on what they do with their, like, their campaign map and stuff like that, Helldivers 2 is the new hotness, right? How much of a user base it will maintain once it's no longer the hotness, that is something we'll see throughout the year. However, my gut instinct, my shamanistic instinct says, Helldivers 2 is going to be the shit for about another month or two. And then it's going to drop on down to its like regional baselines. The majority of users are going to be looking for another thing. In the same way that Helldivers 2 dropped, kind of as um, Lethal Company was kind of like dipping off, which is fine. Like, not every game has to have infinite content and replayability. Some games are great just for a few months. And so long as they make their money back, and so long as they make enough for that team to make the next game, you're fucking winning. You know? Again, these big companies, the, the large publishers who are bemoaning about how little money they're making, it's like, no, no, no. It's because they're not making all money. But yeah. Well, okay, so, Scotty, Caffeine, the problems with Helldivers 2 is it's multi-platform much much I mean we've got people here who have been tangentially involved with multi-platform games that have storytelling elements and oh boy that's tricky so we'll see how it goes like but it's not this isn't a diss on Helldivers 2 all games have a, a level of shelf life right the low background radiation of community that, like, locks in is always awesome, but that's kind of where it's always going to settle, you know? Oh, 
Oh no! What is that? Vernon Flow. I'm sorry your thing got cancelled, but hope you're ready for a drive around the Pacific Northwest. Ah, you know what? Caffeine? Team Fortress 2 was a great one. When at its peak, holy crap, that was the hotness. And it's now reached this like plateau of people that have been playing it year in, year out. And that's fucking amazing. Like, that's the thing to aim for. Where a lot of these bigger projects end up kind of like eating their own tail is because they, again, they expect infinite exponential growth. That's not how games work. Uh, and Scotty, again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to pee on anyone's dreams here. Like, due to Titanfall's success, the core gameplay is going to stay very similar. There isn't going to be too, too much added beyond that. Uh, I know everyone's very excited for the mech suits. They were in the last game. <laughs> the amount of times where I splatted my teammates summoning my mech is more than I can count. And I'm still not sorry, Dave. You were in the way of my robot. I told you. I told you what I was doing. <laughs> but... Sorry. It sounds like I'm just being a negative Nancy. What I mean is, something like Helldivers 2 can continue at infinitum. The problem is that it's both PC and PS5. It is a PlayStation... It is a PlayStation... Pun pay back. PlayStation published game. That means the PS5 version has to be the most developed. It means that anything that goes out for it has to pass cert, thus slowing down what they can do in the PC sphere. So, but the thing to take from this is that users do want good, fun, cooperative experiences. It's almost as if our entire fucking history of video games has a glorious, uh, has a glorious tapestry of cooperative experiences defining us. It's almost like that. Looks at GoldenEye, Halo, fucking quake <laughs> like it's almost like there's been this consistent through line of people really enjoying cooperative experiences i don't know and caffeine please don't misunderstand i'm not saying that the team behind hell divers expects entrepreneurial growth they did not expect any of the level of success they saw at launch that's very well documented all right it's more the point of when Warner Brothers says we want to push more live service games, they're not talking about Helldivers 2. They're talking about another Counter-Strike. They're talking about another League of Legends. They're talking about a Destiny, which in itself is seeing a declining user base. You know? Sony's about to eat them for lunch, which is very sad. Sorry, um, so Hookshot was saying that they argued with a friend last night about Dune Awakening. He said it's got everything you want. Their point was, yeah, but it's an MMO with much more forced PvP. What Hookshot is looking for is for a fun co-op experience. Now, I was under the impression that it was closer to... That's my memory face. Uh, Conan Exiles, in that it's MMO in scope, but it's still, service, it's still like servers hosted uh, by individuals. Um, some smooth jams. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I was looking for uh, smooth jams while we're all chatting. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Let's get in game, but we'll keep talking about this. Because I probably need to, like, paint the car and, like, refill stuff and things like that. Um... Bill's like, where can we get some more tunes inside Pacific Drive? Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Good work, Will. <laughs> You've done very good. Um, but no, so it was more like caffeine, like, Helldivers 2 has done brilliant, and that is something that is incredible to celebrate. It will continue to be a great and fun time, and it is an example of what we should be pointing to of, like, no, no, this is an online experience this is something Stop where hey. 
Scotty, that's really fucking cool of you. Thank you. Um, that is something that we should be pointing to. Actually, let me just put this on because uh, I'm actually going to be sensible for change and advertise our fucking stream, which I should be doing every day, but I'm an idiot. Uh, but no, no, it's just... Please don't take my critique of Helldivers 2 as a it is bad and should do better. It is a great success and a wonderful case study of what users are actually looking for. Oh yeah, well, so Kaolu, this is one of the things that I love looking at is that when you understand the shamanistic nature of how people play games and how games inspire each other, I would argue that Deep Rock Galactic helped influence a large amount of Helldivers 2's choices, or at least make a good case study within the studio as to why to do certain things. You know, the Helldivers team is like 100 plus support, so they're not small, they can't just do weird crazy shit on a whim. What's up, baby boy? But they can get into, uh, if they can make a good case study as to why they can do things, then there's a, a setup. Um, and caffeine, yeah. With the Sony influence, Helldivers 2 was never supposed to be this huge gangbuster, so they were just kind of left to their own devices in terms of like comms. If Sony had known how big it was going to be on launch, they would have been more controlling. You know what I mean? And now that it's already succeeded, they're just kind of letting it do its thing. To, to get into the weeds. Helldivers 2 is a fucking great, great thing and is a good thing that's happened to our industry. You know? Um, now, it's interesting, Legend, you bring up Fallout 76 because while it is a mess, I do think that if you are prepared to go through all the hoops, it is now the kind of experience that I think users are looking for. And I don't think Bethesda's going to do another big push on it. So I think it's just going to quietly sit as this, like, this experience. Um, but right now, if you told me, like, hey, what if we just played a four-player co-op Fallout? Like, fuck yes. Interestingly, their initial push towards having, like, different settlers and PvP and nuking each other was something that nobody wanted. What people wanted was to explore the wastelands and talk to the, the kind of characters that we've come to know from the modern Fallout games. Build a base, go on adventures. Hell, I don't know if they're in today, but Kaimbal, uh, who's a long shipping regular, they were the people that made me completely reevaluate Fallout 76 because they formed a band with three friends and toured the wasteland doing gigs. Now, no one told them to do that. It was pure RP and good times. Fuck, that's the kind of shit that I definitely, definitely wanted to experience. And the PvP experience will always run counter to like a cooperative, fun environment. And while I'm not saying the two can't exist in perpetuity, Well, I'm saying, not saying the two can't exist in perpetuity. I'm saying that one needs to have an honest, shamanistic look at your titles to decide like what it is that people want. You know, PvP in Dune is not fun. No one wants that. People want to be in the world, the the well, I guess pre uh, Emperor of Dune world. You know, the idea of the dangers of Arrakis and exploring it. There's there's really something to to really get into, but. As a, as a third-person PvP title, where's the, 
where's the hook? You know, one side has uh, infinite resources, uh, flying ships and smart bombs, and the other has, checks notes, big worm and blue Gatorade. <laughs> you know? Oh, okay, so Kaolu, uh, shamanistic um, is a shorthand for basically a combination of product knowledge and understanding of user behavior. So like, okay, here's my example of shamanistic versus like the data-driven. It Data-driven, we know that users, I'm trying to think of a, a really easy shorthand. We know users love buying DLC, all right? Because DLC gets released and users buy fuckloads of it. Users will say, we hate DLC, we want expansion packs, but will then buy DLC in droves. So that is a data point, right? Shamanistic is the understanding of games and the games industry in a way that is true, but is not provable in a metrics environment. For example, mods drive sales. To my knowledge, there is still not a case study of any game where the mods for it have driven the game. Right? But we know, shamanistically, that games like Skyrim keep selling because of these massive mod communities, right? We know that. That is shamanistic knowledge. So there you go. Um, the Big Worm and Gatorade is my favorite comedy duo. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Never underestimate the Blue Gatorade. Harkonnens did that. Cost them everything. Okay, let me just uh, post a bit, picture of my fucking cool car uh, in Pacific Drive and then let's get in game. Now, obviously I want to keep talking about this, but... Oh, color me jelly. Uh, Fearless just woke up from a nap. That's living, friend. That's living. Uh, we're just about to jump in game. Just looking over at the Pacific Drive page, it's sitting a very positive with over 5,000 reviews. Real happy with that. Okay, let me just get a good screeny and then we'll, uh, we'll careen into it. Uh, Scotty, I, I didn't wake up until noon. I know I know I shoulda. I should be waking up better. I'm trying, but... Come on down to Big Dan's. We're talking about the games industry and driving a car. Me friends, sorry for that. Oh. But again, like jumping back, jumping back. Whatever you take away from today's stream, I hope it's it is. Video games are doing fucking great, and the breadth and depth of choice we have is just amazing. We're gonna play essentially a non a non-gun based survival game that feels more like the original Stalker games than really anything I've played in a long time. Where we have a possibly sentient beat up station wagon for a best friend. You know, last night I was fucking binging uh, Balaparo. I'm stuck on the Joker deck. Um, and once I've done that, I've done every deck and then I need to start working on difficulties and that's gonna be fun. Uh, yes, I have made an 8 million ship play in one hand. I'm feeling pretty smug about that. Uh, I managed to get one of the late jokers that for every face card you discard, it, it increases the, like, the X multiplier at the end of your score. And I managed to get 8 million in one hand. I'm very proud of that.
Will, did you know that it's really fun to careen around the desert in a giant dune buggy? I, I was not informed of this, my word. Oh my word. You saying dune buggy fun? <gasps> Le gasp! <laughs> Numbers, how are you doing, Fred? What's well, so and welcome? Uh, I've been talking about teletext, games industry, and nonsense. Good. All right, give me two seconds, friends, and let's get this game started. It's a kaleidoscope, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, Jamami, that one was that was so frustrating in the funniest way. Oh, beans! I need my control cable. <laughs> I'm a professional. I promise. You wouldn't fucking think I'd do this for a living. Ah, oh, the fuck it, the death counter's still up. Oh, my word, I am not prepared. Why you lot put up with me to this day, I will never understand. I'm grateful. Love doing this, you know that. But why you put up with me, I will never know. Oh, Scotty, you weren't here earlier. Somebody released a teletext puzzle game on Steam. Like, I'm not even joking. And it's like, basically, you, me, and Angelos, and I think, like, Alnus are the only people who understand what teletext is. Like, I'll, I'll grab you the link for it in just a second once I get the cable, but... But that is a real thing. I got, I got sent a key through, like, key mailer. Teletext puzzle game. Like, what the fuck? Man, Dave's like, I remember Teletext. But yeah, I just, I was pre coffee. I was trying to remember if Turn of the Worm, the uh, Teletext comic, was a real thing or something my dumbass just fucking imagined. There we go. Good to be back. So this is our this is our busted little wagon. So fucking cute. Uh, we need battery jumper and some repair pie. The car's pretty much good to go. Uh, at the moment, we're kind of. <laughs> Actually, Angelos, I'll have to look that up because I do not remember the end of Turn of the Worm. Need to get chemicals while we're out in the field. do the fucking controls on this and everything. Alright. Uh, 
Oh, okay. It just wanted us to get some more. All right. All right. So at the moment, just to, to bring you up to speed, so we've managed to uh, upgrade a large proportion of our kit. Right now, we're trying to basically get enough stuff that we can cross through the wall. The idea that even with us in the exclusion zone, it gets more fucked up the closer we get to the anomaly. Root, root. <laughs> root, root. All in all, we're just trying to get through the wall. Kalu, I, I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Uh, I just, unfortunately, in my little brain, uh, any of those references will automatically be equated to the so bad it's good. Um, uh, what's it? Nostalgia critic review of the wall. God, it's like fucking poetry. Uh, sorry, I have a real weakness for terrible media because sometimes when life's getting to me and when things are hard I I find like I don't have too much of a problem I am Root <laughs> Root, this is a window system make that Groot It's Unix I know this <laughs> Thank you Bacon No, I'm just, I'm one of those people that like if I can't mentally handle, like, clever, good media, uh, I don't have the same kind of problem tackling uh, shitey media. So, like, sometimes I will watch, you know, stuff like I'm trying to think of some other, like, absolute disaster watching. Apparently all my brain can think of is that at the moment, but... <laughs> oh, favor six. Gingers on people. <laughs> I'm about to say that. How are you doing? Um, I guess uh, the other big one for me is... Ah, okay... Actually, I'm going to keep the off-road tires for now. Sorry. Uh, I'm just getting some data on the different uh, pieces. So, some of the, like, insulated doors aren't just pure side grades. They are actually uh, just a little bit more health and things like that, which is worth a thought. Um, but no, like, one of the reasons why I've been going through every video game movie is I can kind of... I could definitely stomach terrible video game movies more than like watching excellent cinema some days. I got into a conversation with a friend yesterday and we were talking about how, you know, multi-screen watching has become very ubiquitous. And my personal philosophy is that, that multi-screen watching is fine. If you're here, this means that you spent a lot of time with PCs and video games and stuff like that that we've reached a point mentally where we can actually multitask between something like this and other things, right? You can watch TV and check your phone at the same time, and you're given as much attention as is required. But I have found that I really have to brace myself for media that's going to require my full attention. <laughs> See, Angelus, you get it. You get it. <laughs> Video games? Never heard of them. It's the future, I'm telling you. It's two little puddles that ping a ball around. It's like ping pong, but free. Um, I do find, though, that with media that is going to be very, very clever and is going to require my full attention, it, I have to really work up to it. <laughs> Alleged, how did you get locked out of your house? <laughs> what happened? Um... So numbers, I have to admit, I've been giving 
if there's a show that I'm not particularly fussed by, I've been giving the English dubs more of a shot than I would have in the past, because that way it doesn't require as much focus. You know, obviously there's like premium watching stuff, which you need the original cast, you need the goodness. But basically, I've got to put my hand up and say like, I've still not watched Parasite. That thing won awards, it pissed off shitty people, and it's a, it's a director I know and I fucking love their work. But I haven't been able to sit down and just dedicate that focus time to it. And I don't know. There's something I've been pondering. The uh, I forget which of the varying streaming services has a, a dub for it, and it's just bad. Oh yeah, well, so numbers, I would say that there's, uh, at least from what I've seen, is a lot of the anime distribution companies and stuff have started to see a value in creating, like, good dubs for people that either can't engage with, like, subtitles in the same way or don't want to. Um, like... I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy Free Room before I started watching it, so I've been listening to the dub on that one. The dub's fucking great. Uh, I will say the dub of Mashal is on... It, it, it's fucking terrible. But with that one, by the time I got the humour, I just went back to... Uh, I just went back to the original voice cast. And that's become kind of like my watching it while I'm having a sandwich. The thing that's been surprising me is how many of the fucking Netflix dubs have been good. Like, shout out to the guys doing, uh, who did the voices, uh, well, the English language voices for the Bucky Hanma anime. They got, they, they completely understood the assignment. <laughs> that they were about to say loudly some of the dumbest lines in humanity from the dumbest characters and just live in it. But. <laughs> I, I guess I'm also saying that we don't owe we don't owe these companies any kind of loyalty when it comes to English language dubs. If they're not going to give the English language cast the time to understand the roles and to be able to like to really give those good performances, that's not that cast's fault, you know. Nick, you shut your whole mouth. <laughs> Ghost stories. Ghost Stories is an example of one of the best dubs of all time, even if every single joke in it has aged poorly. <laughs> uh, and Edwin, you know what? That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Pacific Drive, Ghostwire, Tokyo Drift. Not bad, Austin. Not bad. Uh, the Kaju Valley is definitely, is, is definitely today's banger. Um, sorry, if you don't know the story, and apologies if you do, uh, Ghost Stories was a terrible anime that got picked up by one of the old 90s teams. Um, it was a contractual piece. It was so disregarded by the team that were doing the English language dub for it that they didn't even bother doing a translation script. Um, the cast was basically told, uh, whoever gets in the studio first gets to set the tone. Ah, it was ADV, those fucking bugs. <laughs> um, so the entirety of Ghost Stories is basically like a, an abridged series, but legit. It is offensive. It is 90s South Park humor. Um, it is ridiculous. But it also exists in this place of like, if you let voice actors fucking play around, they can do good shit. You know? Uh, numbers. If you if you watch clips from Ghost Stories, you will think that it is a it, it is a fan dub. It is like just memes. No, that's that's what they put out. Um, 
but yeah, the amount of terrible dubs from back in the day, that's not consumer's fault for critiquing. I remember, what's his name? Fucking Mr. 24. Mr. Ballbag, who got the job of Solid Snake. Just destroying um, Armitage. So, Favourite Six, thank you for the bits. Sorry, that one's gone over my head. And yes, Dustin, Keith Sutherland, that ball bag. You know what, Edwin? That's a good way of looking at it. Ghost Stories is the edgy 2000s version of Samurai for Pizza Cats. Not bad, alleged. Not bad. Pacif Panic at the Pacific Drive-In. Um, so Legend, so I do miss some of the 90s dubs. I don't miss the fucking price. 20 quid for three to four episodes. Alright? I just I just want to point out that the, the ire of old anime fans with mediocre to terrible dubs is deserved. Like... Fuck. Shadow Step still haunts me this fucking day. Now, there were bangers, like Legends, uh, I apologise to forget his name, but the gentleman that voiced the English language version of Vash did such a good job. Same with the rest of that whole cast. Uh, oh, sorry, the reason why I'm faffing around this is I'm genuinely considering getting the lightning rod, because we've got a lot of storage, and... Until we have more stable energy, we can't upgrade the engine, so... The lightning rod just means any time we get struck... That charges our battery, which might not be a bad one. Uh, sorry, says, can you get the OG subversion of Ghost Stories? Probably. I was asking if the Japanese original version of Ghost Stories was actually bad or just mediocre and forgettable. Oh, it's just mediocre and forgettable. It's kind of a yokai of the week, kids in peril show that's just there. You can tell it was definitely one of those anime from the, the 90s that was just... They produced it to fill a gap in programming. It's fine. It's, in a, it's uninteresting, unoffensive. Uh, yeah, I'm on this riding rod. And it's one of those weird things of like, again, I cannot recommend that you watch Ghost Stories. It's incredibly offensive. But I find that I think about it a lot because... What it seeks to do... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say what it seeks to do. God, it makes me sound like a... What it does is kind of fascinating. Uh, side storage, side storage. Alright, let's just... Let's remove this one here. And we can pop this one on here. Yeah! Ghostbusters! Busting makes me feel good. Huh. Uh, Nick says they found out there was a bunch of OVAs for Captain Tyler. He was getting a surprise sequel that wraps up the story 20 years later. Oh shit! I had no idea! Ghostbusters? PSSH, I think you mean Winchesters. <laughs> Alright, now where was the actual side storage? Oh no, that one's one we unlock. Oh. Genius. Alright, well, let me. Stash one of these. Yeah. <laughs> 
I regret to inform you that the Olympic Peninsula is where the book Twilight takes place. Yeah. I mean, this is a story where that whole area has been absolutely obliterated. Unfortunates that know who the asylum are. Atlantic Overdrive. Uh, sorry, uh, Fearless, thank you kindly for the bits. Uh, Favour Six, thank you kindly for the bits as well. Um, so we're kind of getting. Kind of getting to the point now where we need to start crossing over into these areas. And I guess heading up towards here. I think what I'm going to do, friends, is try and hit a couple of... Try and basically do like a big old road trip. So I think the scanner charges mean we can hit this one. Then that. And then go from there. I think. Ah, the Warrens. So we've got a Spark Surge there, but that's not too, too bad because we can use that in terms of... Um, but we can use that to power the car. Grab a couple of goodies on the way. And once we get up to this way, we'll be good for... Oh, we just need to buzz through a few areas as quick as. Now, apparently this area's got mineable setups, which I don't think we've had any success on those ones. No, a bacon, you're still y'all. You still got it. You still got it. Alright. Anyway, I think we're good to go. Car's up to snuff. Uh, we've got tons of storage. If we get struck by lightning, that charges the car battery. Jobs are good. <laughs> For puns, thank you. Uh, we can't faff around too much. So I think ultimately what we need is... Enough resources to be in the field, but we just need kind of uh, anomalous materials where possible. Pacific Drive on the Balatar Road again. That's a good one. Uh, if you didn't see it, the uh, the Pacific Drive peeps put a little meme of sneaking Balataro onto the console here. Um, I believe my exact words were, I'd fucking die. I'd die of malnutrition. Chips in to get a train going. You already. What do you mean, chips in? You were throwing so much. Like, thank you, Paul. It is okay for us just to. After yesterday, it's okay to have just a teeny tiny train. That is all right. <laughs> Sorry, and I don't mean to ignore the uh, the twilight talk. It's more. Um, uh, ContraPoints put out a video on Twilight this week, and uh, it's a great reminder of why no one likes philosophers. <laughs> okay. 
So, oh, okay. So those are spark towers to charge. Anomaly train. So honestly, we just want to hit that, then that. Wait a second. So we can't go through here. All right. Well, then we'll hoover up these two, hit that area, and then I guess that's our setup. Level two. Oh, that's a horrifying bus saw. Love that for us. D R I V E R Rain Shadow of Squim. <laughs> that's a good one, Fearless. All of you, thank you. Again, you were all incredibly generous yesterday. So you're all good. I don't want you all to think I'm just trying to rinse cash. I'm very grateful. I guess I'm just afraid. I guess I'm just afraid. Um. Tiny chew. Every time I look over with the bling. Depressed people worried about flat tires. It's because they're always carrying despair. Oh no! Puns! <laughs> that is very funny. <laughs> oh my word. Thank you. Fuck. You know what? Let's just, let's just grab a little bit of fuel. Why not? Why not indeed? <laughs> The fear is real. Oh, we are absolutely stoked. Oh, shit! She post! No! Get back in my... I don't want to be irradiated. Get back in my car. J post, thank Stop you. It. Sorry. Whoever you are, you fucking know who you are. You absolute terror. Thank you. What the fuck? Just wanna go check something over here. Thank you for your generosity. Fuck you for the Ussy division. It's an abandoned squire. Might as well strip this because if we're only going to this section. Due to IGN's recommendation of Dark Cloud 2, we must now reach level 5. If that is what you lot choose to do, I am very grateful. recently collaborating on a paper with a strict character limit. Every time somebody wanted to add something, they would remove some punctuation. Eventually, we ended up with a document where the reader could never pause. The reader could never pause. The tragedy of commas strikes fuck off! <laughs> oh, you absolute terrors. Thank you. What are you doing? Thank you. Uh, also, uh, Nick, it was uh, Kuntaku's recommendation of Dark Cloud. Uh, Igan doesn't get any points for that one. Uh, sorry, we had a whole thing yesterday where somebody was asking who Kuntaku was and the story. Uh, I don't think I've learned how to make the thing that lets us steal whole-ass door parts. Should have built it. Fuck, I should have built it. Damn it! Why is 
it raining tires? Why are you there? I hate this. Uh, basically, these armored doors are something we don't have access to for a while. So, there is a piece of kit that lets you uh, cut panels off existing uh, setups. So, I think I've got to start bringing that with just in case. Tourists are coming in. Don't worry, everybody. I know how to handle these dickheads. That's my secret. But let's get the fuck out of here before we get weeping exploded. We got a long way to go. Little bit of time to get there. We're gonna have to kind of get both of the anomalies and then find our little path out. Bunnies, no! Nope. Angelus, I got it right at the end of the last stream. I think you were uh, having a good old snooze by that point. I found something to replace the fucking shark. Which I am still considering to be a personal insult, by the way, just so you know. As the train comes to a conclusion, thank you all. <laughs> one of these days, Will, one of these days when life is a little less, well, gestures, we'll get you out to the Olympic National Park in real life. Oh, I would love that, Fearless. I really would. I really would. I don't know. We'll just, we'll get through this month, we'll get through GDC, and then, you know, I need to, to reevaluate my life a little bit. But that's another story. Friends. Just want to say thank you all, all right? Yesterday was a lot, a lot. And, you know... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to say no to large, gigantic sponsors or patrons or what have you, right? Things are still hard and we're still struggling through, but yesterday was so much. Like, so much! And I don't want to always be talking about money, because that's just a tool for keeping us alive and keeping this going, right? So, all of you, thank you. I just, yeah. I don't, I don't have the emotional stability to deal. No! After train bits. Sorry. Thank you. That is, again, that's 10 bucks to keep us alive. Actually, never mind. We've got winch wankers. No, fuck off. Fuck off. No! Yeah! Fuck! Yeah! Fuck! Absolutely. Those guys are the fucking poster child for I'm gonna cause problems on purpose. Bunnies, no! Miss me! Miss me! Alright, fuckers. Where are you? Uh, 
Oh shit, it's stealing the bodies. I gotta admit, that's actually pretty fucking funny. Oh no! Uh, Favor 6 says Terratech World is on the 22nd, but they're working and uh, busy until November. I mean, the, the challenge is real. Yeah, charge my car! Charge my fucking car! Oh, I'm in serious trouble. Side bumpers took a bit of scraping and the door's a bit fucked, but. Fuck, am I so on? Let's hear it for those off road tyres. Alright. I rust is a real condition, no matter what anyone says. Important safety tip, do not stand between the Tesla coils and the target. <laughs> You're not wrong. There was a clip doing the rounds on TikTok of a guy who gets zapped by a Tesla coil on his noggin, and he just... He just resets. He just resets. And Andorf, what and welcome. I'm doing good. I'm gonna be lucky to be alive. Look at its skill right here. Look at its skill. Doing pretty good for resources. I mean, what I really need is chemicals. But what we can do is, all right, continue down the road this way. Of course, witch wankers. Just have a quick there. Uh, continue down the road. Um, once we're there, get the other anomalous material. The stable anomalous material. Take that with us. Um, hit up some of the science buildings before we sound the klaxon to get out of here. I'm getting good at driving this thing. Helps the tires don't suck. I think that's our plan. And again, Scotty, thank you kindly. The car's a little beat up. I'm annoyed I couldn't steal the uh, armoured pieces, though. Because I have a feeling that once we get through the wall, that's when we start unlocking the more dangerous anchors. And that's the point we start being able to build the really good car pieces. Radiation heavy around here. I'm sure hope nothing bad happens. Hate that for us. Oh, okay, so before my fucking up uh, and nonsense, so what we chatted about prior, friends, I 
forgive me, I've completely lost my train of thought. I guess we were talking about the shamanistic versus the the, the metrics in terms of picture games, which is... You know what? I'm getting cooked here. Let's, let's, let's move on. Um, but that's one of my favourite little, like, industry topics, because... The discussion of product knowledge and its value is often kind of undersold. Oh, it's still doing the thing. I thought we fixed that. Uh, every time I put my car in reverse, the bonnet pops open. This British shitbox can go from zero to 60 in three to four business days. Notice the amount of times I say in theory in this game, uh, and it is directly proportionate to the amount of survivability I think I have. Oh yeah, no, Famous Six, we got to, we, we unlocked that earlier on, yeah, the turbo model. Only takes us three to four business days. God. Can't believe, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> this Nick went, a theory, a game theory. I can't believe Matt had died. Bunnies, no! You little bastards! My fucking car alone. Little shit! Absolute little bankers. Thanks, witch wanker. Okay. Get off my fucking car. Before you say anything, yes, I did accidentally leave it in park. Oh. Get the fuck out of here. I've lost the road. I've lost my mind. Oh no! Fucking bastard! Fucking car mimic. Radiated. Oh, I hate that for us. Let's get the fuck out of here. <sighs> oh yeah, did you not see my my cheeky little airship? Yeah, that's my uh, my newest find. Right, once we get out of this irradiated hellscape, hatch up the car. When we get back, I'm gonna get the blueprints to learn how to clip doors off in case we encounter another round of like the armored doors or something. Because at least if we just keep them in the car. Fuck your shopping trolleys. 
Off your couch. <laughs> God damn it. Sorry, uh, Paper Six, I read your uh, your comment and then immediately checked my rearview mirror. Just because. Wait, Big Love? What are you doing here? Hopper shopping trolleys. I am. I'm Scotty. Thank you for this again, friend. I don't know, Adolf. Have you checked your bird hole? Engine's doing fine. That's good. <laughs> well, I'm glad we cleaned that up. This might be the reason why I've got no close friends. Fucking worth it, baby. Check the facilities over here. We need more stuff. Because uh, at this point, we're out of chemicals. I guess that's some kind of cool ass tower. And Scotty, there's only one way to find out. It's me, Matt Berry. I'm like Barry Scott, for the more discerning gentleman. style decals right there. Love to see it. So, alright, so this isn't going to be a complete wash. <laughs> Scott is like, you don't need chemicals in the environment, but they certainly have. If I'd be more prepared, we'd have an armored door by now. GTFO along. Sure as shit fucking sounds like it. Alright. keep going for a little bit longer. I 
want to see what this blue tower is now that it's been instated. But... Uh, so, Scotty, I think the armored doors are just more durable. But... Considering the state of everything, I wouldn't say no to that, you know what I mean? Okay, so what are you? Oh yeah, no, that is definitely the GTFO alarm. I guess this is just going to be a good spot for resources. All right, we've got a, we've got a couple minutes. Leave the engine ticking over. A couple minutes. In out five minutes. No fuss. Grab the goods. Get the back of the van. This was basically the thing we were doing in the previous story mission, but does it help us now? Or am I just, you know, a bit of the old history repeating? Alright, yeah, no, time to go. Time to go. In the rear with the gear. Let's go. And you know what? Fuck it. It's not like we need to stash anything. All right. Let's drive. Let's Pacific drive. Fucking way! Fuck that one tree in particular! Don't even worry about it! Bunnies. No, not right now. No! Fucking bunnies! Fuck off! Got to be shitting me. Come on, buddy. We can do this. We can do this. I believe in you. Oh, come on. Don't you quit on me. If I'm not quitting, you're not quitting. Eight. Don't you fucking quit on me. Don't you fucking ruin Mother's Day again. I can't, I don't have time to turn the fucking radio off. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on, we're almost through. Come on, a buddy. Yes. Fuck, that was not worth it! Woo!
da 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 once you get that unfortunate driving under control. Shut up, Grandma. My poor car. Let's see, got a flat here. That's not happy. <sighs> yeah, it'll buff right out. Don't even worry about it. This did not go well. It's fine. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. I know how to drive. I can do good driving sometimes. And save the putty for the basically our like our road kit, but <sighs> don't even worry about it. I do have the flames unlocked, I just don't want to tempt fate, you know. Oh well, beast of bronze. Uh, have a lovely rest of your day. Uh, we're currently... <laughs> okay, some poor choices were made. Alright. I certainly could have handled this better. But, we're still alive. That's what's important. Uh, also, I now need to make one of the um, door clipping kits. Because I didn't... I kept hovering over this one, the Liberator. And I was like... I was like, I can't see where we'd need this, you know? But now I get it. The Liberator is when we encounter, like, other armoured cars that have done well. Will drive slightly sails ships in Sea of Thieves. The quality of this is left as an exercise to the viewer. <sighs> so mean to me. So mean. You hear this, friends? I'm getting bullied. This is, this is bullying. Okay. Uh, how many cracked windows have we got? You know what, let's just have it tell me. The car, the tank, the battery. <laughs> Look at that. And it's got quirks. Which I thought we'd fixed. So when car moves backwards, hood opens. Already diagnosed. Oh, it's because we need an electrician's kit to fix it. Alright. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got... One cracked window. Two cracked windows. And then just a whole bunch of putty. Love that for us. Okay. This is fine. <laughs> Oh, we can't make an electrician's kit yet. We can make a mechanic's kit. That's why we can't do anything. That's why the car is still wonky when we're going backwards. <sighs> this might be the reason why I've got no close friends. Fucking worth it, baby. Good news is the engine's still doing all right. Battery could use a bit of a charge, but oh. 
next time we're doing our route planning. Oh, gods. Hopefully that's a safe area, because that's what we fucking need right now. We need like a little peace area where I can get a bunch of chemicals and kind of lick my wounds. But these anomalous areas look fucking scary. We are not ready for those. Okay, so that's probably where we're going next. Alright, so whilst I've got to repair this fucking car, so one, again, how are you all doing, friends? Um, I kind of, I guess I already natted about most of the game industry stuff that I wanted to talk to, talk about today. Though it was fun with uh, Cowlew asking earlier, getting to talk about like you know shamanistic games industry knowledge and things like that. Um, yeah, actually, Nick, I need to talk to the Sea of Thieves pirates on the subject of your dissing my piloting. One, I'm not bad. I'm not as good as M's, but I'm not bad. Uh, two, um, we should have a guest pirate tomorrow. Should. Fingers crossed. Um, and I need to ask M's very politely if they don't mind stepping out so I can get you and Tommy basically on the same vessel. Looks like we're just going to need to use all of our putty and then wherever we go next we've just got to fucking make it in the field, you know? Uh, sorry. Um... Definitely take a big old tin of beans with us. From anything we need, friendly dumpster? A crude paddle, a crude door, a crude paddle, and some scrap. Some people would be offended by this. I, I'm just uh, accepting it. Uh, okay, the crew panels don't get us any goodies. Alright. I know guinea pigs, I know. It was a badly it was a badly planned run. It was a badly thought out run. Should have been better. <laughs> Check anything here? So hopefully, okay. sorry friends, he, um, I've probably talked to you all about this like many, many times, but one of the challenges when it comes to streaming for a living is sometimes that the game gets you in such a way that you kind of lose track of yourself. Like, which is fucking cool and fine. Like, that's not a critique on it at all. It's just, it's very real. And yeah, until we start getting the really good unstable energy... Doing there. Uh, I 
actually, the insulated headlights might not... Oh, we haven't encountered sizzling mist yet, so I can't do that. And the side floodlights I'm not too keen on, because our battery kind of sucks. Uh, roof headlights would be fucking good, but I don't think we've got that. Ooh, we could start researching the lead plated stuff. That might not be a bad shout. Lead plated panels. Because we are going to be going into more irradiated areas. Roof rack or side rack? I haven't unlocked anything for the seat racks yet, but... <laughs> sorry, Lost Flower says, No need to apologise, to which I immediately respond with sorry. <sighs> yeah, I think I just need to go on a big old hoarding spree after this. Okay. That's fucking cool. Alright, so... Um, okay. Sorry. So one of our big bottlenecks has kind of been power, right? We've been pretty fine for gasoline... But power has been a challenge. We got the little spark on the roof, which is, means anytime somebody tries to electrocute the car, it's, we siphon it into the battery, which is cool. Now, these things here are real cute. So there's a hydro generator, meaning that anytime our car is getting rained on, we're acquiring more energy. This one is a mini turbine that would, anytime we're in windy winds, we get more energy. And then this is a side battery. Now, we can't afford all of these. But what we could do is the hydro, because I mean, let's face it, it's the greater, it's the greater Washington area. Rain's pretty common, and instead of getting a roof rack, we get another side rack. So that means we have two racks for storage, and we have two racks for power. Oh, Phyllis says the mini turbine works when you're driving. Oh, fuck yeah, that's even better. Oh, hang on. Let me just make sure I can get both. Oh. Let's get the mini turbine and we can get things like the side battery later because uh, this is 0 0.7 for the mini turbine but the new side rack is 2 so it takes us just below but we can get this now and it'll be good for like long runs. I think it's... Uh, <laughs> Because at the moment, we haven't had the chance to really hit capacity with a lot of this stuff. So... Right, we've got this here. The lightning rod's doing good. And we can decon... Yeah, we can take this off. Put this out here. And then construct the turbine on the other side. So that way we're just not worrying about power when we're out in the field. Because, at least in my humble opinion, that's something that we've been really struggling against. But yeah, no, I hadn't even considered that moving around the environment would have helped us there. Alright. And we've still got some extra size storage in the event. Actually, why am I an idiot? Why am I not putting emergency supplies on the outside of the car? Dingus. It is I, Von Dingleberry. Let 
And I did build the little thing where if you pop objects in here, then they will repair themselves over time. So in the event that things get a bit too banged up. Okay. Right, so we're just going to repair as much as we can. Alright, so the back door's looking good. The panels are all beaten to shit. Yeah. I think it's more the case of like because this isn't this is the idea of a car like sprung to life like if I had to bet kind of like and the headlights are fine if I had to bet like dollars for donuts I'd say that the car doesn't have the, con the concept of an actuate uh, of an alternator sorry Actuator. Manifest your dreams with an actuator. I'm Barry Scott, and now I, I'm trying to sell you a car that came out of my mind. tank. We've still got a spare uh, load of fuel, but I th think that's something we'll need as we're travelling like, further afield. Oh my word! <laughs> bullying me! I'm not bullying. See this, friends? Bullied. <laughs> do we still have sausage rolls there? No, we do not. Fiona got a, uh, it was like a light up cardboard pirate ship uh, based on the Queen Anne's Revenge. And it was going free on Buy Nothing, so it wasn't like we spent cash on it. Turns out it, there was a reason it was free. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Lost Flowers says, Be nice to Will, he's having a hard time! <laughs> yeah, I am. Oh, I would make a sandwich, friends, um, but I am getting real close to mastering the art of the sandwich. Uh, Fiona cooked up like a whole bunch of like like kebab style meat uh, yesterday, day before. And so what we're doing is basically making like like a teeny tiny Philly cheesesteak almost. So like getting the meat, uh, heating up some provolone over it. Like that. Some like a mustard mayo. Not quite aioli because I'm just making it myself. And then like homemade pickles, salad. Oh, oh, so good. Uh, Beast of Bronze is mastering the art of the crispy cheese taco. That is a good skill to master. Uh, I've been slowly working on my quesadilla game. Currently, my quesadillas are mid. I like them, but I know I can do better. Um, God. So I was talking with some friends last night, and we got talking about, like, lockdown hobbies, and, like, what we would have done if we had to do it again, and I've, I've been thinking about that a lot today. So, here's the thing. Lockdown happened, and it was basically, we were all stuck on the internet together. And let me tell you, some of the things we did longship-wise during that early period has been some of the most fun that we've had, like, off-stream. Uh, to those of you that witnessed Drunk Will and, um, what was it? Oh, God, it was the night we did... Uh, Rise of Skywalker, and I got belligerently drunk. Well, so, Angelos, you know what I mean. Like, you know, the plague is still here. It's still scary. But, you know, 
culture is no longer supporting us being indoors all the time like it was. I'm still, hey, I'm still here. We don't do as much stuff on the Longship Discord in the evenings, but that's just, currently that's an exhaustion problem, you know. By the time I've got the dogs out, it's usually about midnight, and you all don't need to deal with drunken midnight will. Anyway, but we were talking about, like, hobbies and things doing it, and the person I was talking to was like, you know what, like, I'm not a big nerd, but gods, I wished I made, I started a D&D campaign, because... Uh, this particular individual, they live in a house with, like, a bunch of other service industry workers, like, you know, bartenders, cook chefs, etc. And because of the weird hours, there were six people in a, you know, six... Sorry, six people, a six-bedroom, three-kitchen, three-bathroom house. Like, a big house. And they never saw each other, usually, because, you know, service industry means your weekend can be, like, Monday, Tuesday. Um... But suddenly they were all in the house together. And they ended up having these big cookouts. And, you know, this one friend, he was teaching uh, other people in the house who didn't know how to cook and things like that. It was like, it was lamenting on having a D&D campaign. And the thing that I've been lamenting, which, sorry if I've whinged to you about this before, I really wish I'd gotten into the habit of cooking for fun, not because I'm hungry. Because I, I, I can cook. I'm slowly, slowly getting over my my fear of cooking but that's something that slipped into my psyche after i moved out to seattle because i spent so much time in other people's homes with their kitchens i didn't, didn't i stopped feeling comfortable oh i know what this does now sorry uh if we leave a bunch of shit on the floor the turbo vac just just hoovers it all up. I love that. All right. So what have we got survival kit wise? Jump kit. We've got that. So there's anything else we can make? Yeah, cooking in a flat chair can be real shit. You know. And the thing is, like, you know, I moved in with Fiona. We have a kitchen I can use, but my fucking noggin, especially in the first place first place I moved into, I couldn't get over the idea that it, I couldn't get the idea of that this was my kitchen into my head. I still felt like this was somebody else's space. And then in the previous place, I'm getting better. In this place, I love it. But, you know, my goal at the moment is a very simple one, is I want to learn how to make good sushi rice. Um, I'll probably end up just getting even fatter from eating rice all the time, but you know, what is life if not the pursuit of uh, of happiness? Laugh and grow fat. You know what? I'm gonna stash these on the side. Even though this will be the last of our kind of uh, repair parties. This way, at least when we're in the field, we're fine. Hopefully I can start making enough resources where we can stash all this shit, you know? But yeah, so we've got this little side luggage for everything we need to repair the car. Yeah, big damn judging your every sandwich. And yeah, no, and Angelo's, like, that's understandable. Oh, yeah, no, fearless. That's the thing. Um, uh, one of the things I used to do back in the day is kind of like my little my little gaming tree uh, for myself is I would get a really nice cut of salmon. I'd skin it and bone it. Then I'd do... And when I say like a sashimi cut, I mean like basic bitch chunks. But i do cuts of salmon like that. And I'd soak in lime juice like um, ceviche until it gets that nice outer... Then that, a big old chunk of bread, and that would be like while I was, you know, playing like long form games and stuff like that. Oh. Uh, I also had a partner that uh, got me onto uh, balsamic vinegar and olive oil, and just like a big old chunk of, I don't know what the American equivalent of tiger bread is, but like big, soft, fluffy loaf, the kind you just pull like crispy chunks off of. Oh, oh, love it. 
but I don't know. Even with those things, they're they're lovely treats, but they've always still been functional, right? Like I'm gaming, so that means I need food. You know, the great thing about living out here and my metabolism finally slowing down is I'm actually gaining weight. Like the first time in my fucking life. It's great. I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, wow, I don't look like a fucking jaunt ass skeleton. I don't look like a, a stowaway dying of consumption. It's great. Oh, yeah, Angela's. Top tier. So yeah, so that's been my little goal. Um, it's something I wish I'd started doing during lockdown, but also... I feel very honoured that when lockdown dropped, like, you all chose to spend your time here. Like, here in Twitch and on the longship and stuff like that. And I hope I was at least vaguely useful, you know? Wow, that's a... 9-hour junction. Uh, and there's no... There's no safe areas current. All good. Alright. I want to come out to the blistering woods. Uh, actually, instead of the blistering woods, what if we did the downs? Tone coat. Fucking hate that. Both of them are bad. All right, well we'll see where this takes us. Malfunctioning mess. Heavy fog. And all those clouds. Don't know what turncoat is. Oh yeah, no, fearless. Yeah, like a French baguette, olive oil, balsamic vinegar dipping. Oh, oh, that's the good shit. All right, we're packed and ready to go. Okay, Dustin, I don't know if you've got like a little book of names. Please write that down with Pacific Drive, Carmored Core 6, Fires of Super Rubicon. Friend, you've got to write a book at some point. You've got to. You owe it to the world. That's too fucking good. Super Rubicon. <laughs> Fuck, that's good. Game respects game, friend. And Angel Kalina, what and welcome. How goes it? Okay. Oh, okay. So I get it now. So we could go to here to malfunctioning mess. And then go to here and see how it goes. Yeah, definitely don't want to go there. Swift storm, intense radiation. So we'll stop at F1, and then we'll head to the next one. Okay. <laughs> Kestrel says, and now for something completely different. Uh, my mother bought Little Bear a shark stuffy. Like a blarge, or blarhage, or however it's said. Oh wow, this is just a fucking spooky ass straight shot. I hate this, let's get some tunes going.
Welcome to the great PNW. Angel Cleaner, you're getting paid for the overtime though, right? Like, it's not like games industry... Okay. You know, see if... Yeah, yeah, I can see. Stash that. Mechanics kit, love to see it. Let's see if there's anything on the side of this. Oh, armored door! Alright. Now, in theory, in theory, we should be able to take the pieces we've got from here. Fucking door. Armored door, fires of Olympia. There we go! Although the uh, fires of the Super Rubicon, I'm, I'm just in, I'm in awe of. Alright, so which of these steel doors has taken the most amount of punishment? Alright, seems like it's actually my driver's side door, so. this in the trunk just in case we don't end up taking enough with us but we can chuck it if we end up with too many resources you know what oh, a job oh thank you sorry i wasn't fishing for food earlier but that is true some fucking road snacks going I'll just uh, pause it for a second so i don't run down our entire fucking car uh ghosts of mitsubishima <laughs> Keep getting better. Oh, lovely. I got noodles. That smells embarrassing. Um, uh, forgive the quick poems. Goes to Mitch, miss a bitch. Ah, it does my dyslexic brain a damage, but it's very good. Um, man, if we can find some of these armored doors, we can like we can bulk out our car. Might have to. Excuse me. Make more space. Actually, so. Angelos, the one thing I did want to ask is uh, the concept of like uh, like mining areas and stuff like that. I, ha 
haven't seen any areas that I can air quotes mine. Am I just missing it, or is it like the obvious rocks and things like that? where I can uh, apparently mine things. I haven't encountered those yet. Or at least if I have, I haven't realised I have, you know. Oh, thank you. Uh, it was accidentally a shark, and then I changed that. Uh, the uh, thing I was talking about with Fiona before we got... No, bunnies, no. Bunnies. No. No. No, bad bunnies. Bad bunnies. Did they get me? I don't think they got me. Uh, oh, God. Sorry, I got a little pothole or something. Stop leaving the cab light on. Why has my battery all run out? Fucking cab light on. Oh, okay. Um, sorry. Angelus was saying that the the mining resources icon is how many, like, raw resources we can find, like wrecked cars, etc. Okay. <laughs> uh, and Jam, I absolutely agree. Whether intentionally or otherwise, the tunes always seem to be thematic. And it's always haunting when, like, you're trying to get shit done, the bunnies jump on, and then suddenly your car's just belting out tunes of its own volition. Fucking hate that. I didn't want to make a fancy sandwich whilst uh, we're driving about is I'm not sure that the joy that those sandwiches bring me is appropriate for twitch.television I'm just going to say that now there's a facility up the road Don't need gas, we're doing fine for that. So. regular car. It is a regular car. I'll take the extra supplies. A little bit unset to leave. Put out! That this place is still lit up. 
I think I was pondering it, and there's something about how everything in Pacific Drive is bigger than you might be a big part of why this game slaps so hard, right? Like, the only reason you're able to survive in the zone is because of your car best friend, right? Without it, you're just fucked. Which does kind of beg the question, like... How bad this would have been had you not had this vehicle. Beat up winner, baby. God, it's not actually his name. But... God. Maybe that's it. Sorry, I was thinking about it. Maybe that's where a lot of other titles have been falling down where this is succeeding, is that this game does seem to know when to let us breathe. Because, I, okay, let's pondering it. There's been loads of games that have come out since Stalker kind of changed people's philosophies on what games could be. The idea that not every game has to be about a white guy with a crew cut who shoots 18,000 guns and carries a million rounds. And loads of people have tried to evolve that that idea, right? You know, we've had the Metro games, we've had Fallout, and I mean like modern shooty gun bang Fallout, things like that. But what's interesting is coming back to that whole game loop design is that a lot of those games, they've refined the way in which they do open world design and gameplay in that you're never really not doing things, which is good, right? You want to keep the user engaged, you want to keep them entertained, you don't want them to be bored. But, I don't know, sometimes the idea of doing nothing being the correct path, I don't think there's a value... I don't think the value in that is truly appreciated. Uh, by which I mean, when playing the original Stalker, sometimes you'd be walking for like three, four minutes, and we encounter nothing. Nothing happens, right? But it meant that... Ooh. You know what? Whatever that flicker was, I think that's a good... I need to get fucking go. Yeah, we got this fog rolling in. But with Pacific Drive, I find there are these punctuated moments of just doing nothing. And... I don't know. It's something to I've really come to appreciate in pacing. You know, if every moment is crazy non-stop bullet hell, eventually that becomes just a, a basic norm. Right? Lost flowers, I know. I'm, I'm laying down the shocking hot takes today, but no, a game doesn't have to be about a dude with a crew car firing one million at... But besides, BJ Blaskowitz basically mastered the beefcake protagonist character, so. If you can't be BJ Blaskowitz or uh, the Doomslayer, why? Oh, Handlebar, what own welcome. Sorry. Forgive me while I'm uh, stuffing my face. Uh, how goes it? But yeah. I think it's something that I don't know if I've really appreciated until now that we're stopping to have some food is that 
there are parts of this game where the correct thing to do is to do nothing, right? When some of those storms hit, you've just got to ride it out, you know? The idea of, like, an enforced nothing. I don't know. I, I think it works real well with pacing. And maybe that's just me, you know? When we talked about Helldivers 2, the thing that... And honestly, I haven't seen anybody apart from us really discuss this, about how there is no part of Helldivers 2 that isn't fun. It's fun to choose the mission. It's fun to fuck around in the, you know, dystopian fascist parody. It's fun to shooty gunbang. It's fun to get murdered and respawn. Like, it's fun across the board. Mm. No, sorry, um, an angel. I completely agree with you. This <laughs> an angel lives. What? Oh, and welcome. How are you doing? But yeah, you're trusting the player to like understand that there will be those moments. Uh. Okay, Angel Lives is also a good one. Eagle Lives, what a welcome. It's because I was reading Angelos' comment when he came in. Um... <laughs> Jumami says, uh, The gameplay and exploring the anomalies makes me feel like if I was in this situation, I just accept becoming part of the anomaly. Yeah, the... I just The thing about that that's so genius is that we're, we're supposed to become obsessed with this car. But through the medium of video games, i.e. leveling up, improving, working on our car, we do become obsessed with it. Which I think is fucking smart. Um, and Angelos, I, I very much agree with you. And it's a... I don't know. I think I'm just bored with it. I think younger users could come in and enjoy that experience. But I agree with you. There's a lot of designers out there for whom, if there isn't something popping off every 30 seconds, they feel like they've failed. Right? Kind of like, there's a large number of people from the, from the AAA space who look at uh, survival games or emergent narrative games, and their takeaway is, what the fuck is that? Alright. Uh, I do need to hit some of these. Um, but their takeaway from a lot of this is not uh, how cool they made a game that has pacing, but how can we control the quiet moments to make them loud? That's, or at least that's the takeaway I've been getting from a few of these projects, you know what I mean? What the fuck is that? Engine fucking running. This is about to get weird anyway. I don't know if I've scanned this anomaly, so I'm gonna try. Okay, guess not. It's just a line. Alright. And Air Dragon, what and welcome. Hello, hello. How goes it? Hello, I'm not dissing on games that have very, very controlled um, 
like experiential type gameplay. It's just that's not where I'm at. That's not where I'm at. And I don't know. Sorry, I forgot to stash the nonsense. Alright, All right, Angel Kalina to be continued. Have a lovely rest of your evening. I don't know what that blue thing is in the central area, and I feel like we should check it out, but we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> okay, I do like Pacific Drive, Mercedes Nuts. Stop that incessant clicking. I'm gonna stash the car here because we do need to go check for specifically chemicals. And Scotty, thank you, friend. Got a cool house here. Got so many road flares. I will say, uh, carrying a conversation on the areas where things are a little bit more. Intense is challenging, to say the least. Alright, so there's us. Now, in theory, back this way there was a science facility, which is one of the things we need to hear. Let's see it. Oh, here we go. Man, just fucking hiding here, huh? And then spike puddles. Some chemicals is better than no chemicals, right? Okay. So yeah, forgive me. <laughs> the old uh, trying to handle uh, both banter and the fear of the unknown at the same time. You know, Scotty, you're so right. Just the atmosphere around this, it makes it really fucking intense. The problem is I'm trying to make, like, clever points about, like, you know, philosophy and game design and shit like that. Inventory full? No. Inventory full. Uh, sorry, and I just uh, saying I agree with you over, like, it feels like there's always something to be anxious about. Like, this game very gets that. Oh, God! Fucking hell, tourists! I know I need to get us a fucking... I know I need to get us a fucking light or something. Oh, you lock it fuck right off! Zappy no zappy! Zappy no zappy! Okay, I gotta admit, putting that thing on the car was a real smart play. Even if us getting electrocuted to shit hurts. Yeah, Jamami, emphasis on work. That's what this game's been 
been doing so well. It's that fucking, those fucking nerves. Now, does this take damage when it heat, when it stores stuff? Maybe. But, but battery's nice and charged. Love that for us. Okay, so we've got a storm coming in. Is that sorry I just I keep seeing this thing in the center it's like a, a blue aurora symbol oh uh, Nick have a lovely rest of your evening uh, I look forward to sailing with you tomorrow and to be continued friend You know what, I'm going to give up on trying to make clever points whilst we're out of the field. And I'm just going to nervous talk our way through it, that's alright. You know how it be. Spiky, spiky puddles. Spiky, spiky puddles. Spiky, spiky puddles. Alright, seems like a good spot to... Take a moment. Ultimately, though, what we do need is um, just shitloads of chemicals. Everything else is fine and dandy at the moment, but... super low on things to repair our poor little car. I mean, ideally, once we get enough stuff, we can put pieces on rotation. That way, we'll... Every time we head back, instead of having to just manually putty repair everything, we just swap out one set of goodies for another. I was almost about to ask uh, Angelos if there's a height UI button, uh, but when I say that, I mean for the purposes of taking screenshots, not because I don't like the UI. Alright, I gotta find out what that blue thing is, alright? Gotta find out. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm so rude. Hey, uh, I really love the stuff you did on this game, uh, Angelo. It's like it's it's really fucking good. How do I turn it off and never see it again? <laughs> with uh, with friends like these, right? Just gonna leave the lights on here, just so that we can fucking see. You know? If it runs down the battery, fine. We've got a jumper kit. Uh... It's 
last bins. That's the bad news alarm. Thought we had more time. Uh, now, you know what? I'll have to find out whatever that thing is later. <laughs> Verdon flow. Or it's the good news siren. Ah, yes, the good news siren. That most notable of features. Boop, boop, boop. Everything is fine. W well done. Don't worry. Crack the back bloody window. Ugh. Oh, one of the tires has gone flat. Ugh. I don't know whose fault it is, but I'm grumpy about it. Whilst we're, I guess, a couple seconds away from putting Pog. Uh, we've got a repair kit. Safety kit, there we go. Oh, there's a mechanics kit, alright, we got that. lose the headlight, we lose the headlight. Oh man, so the place we did earlier was just the highway, so that was F1. Find stability. Alright, so this is blistering woods stable anchor got a left right not much in the way of resources to check our fuel when we get there time is okay all right this is going to get real spicy real fast so if i stop being a good conversationalist please understand why So here's the idea. I'm going to take the right path, definitely hit this, and then... Uh, these are the places we need to hit. Alright, now we'll take the left path and just grab in what we can. As much as that... That anchor is so fucking... Oh, no. Tourists come in lightning variants. <laughs> Just like London. Fucking tourists.
what I need, friends, is another couple of those, like, um... What I need is another couple of those, um, like, peaceful areas where the clock doesn't run out so we can just strip mine for resources. Okay, easy there. Easy there, Bessie. Get squirrely. <laughs> I don't know why my brain immediately went here, but now. <laughs> Just gonna take this and try. And someone should make a song about that. Uh, Bus Crusader, thank you for the 300. I hope you're having a splendid day. Uh, I am trying to converse about the games industry, but uh, I'm mostly just filled with trepidation and fear. How are you? <laughs> um, we've been hearing a lot of the bad news alarm. We haven't heard as much of the good news alarm as I would have liked. This is fucking terrible. Ah, oh, beans. Poor car. The poor car is just getting electrocuted to shit here. These flares are fucking useful. I wish I'd known how good the flares were earlier on. Nothing. There's loads of times I was like, Psh, flares? I don't need those. Those are for nerds. Alright. There we go. Sweet, sweet chemicals. Sorry, um, <laughs> I didn't mean to make weird noises at you. Uh, Holy Bus had uh, rice bowl for dinner. That's fucking great. Yeah, you know what, Vern? It's better we don't say. It's fine. It's fine. to yo. Alright, alright, I'm back! Goida! So I think I get it. The, the car doesn't like being left alone. H2 one, the sequel to water. Like, sorry, I'm still laughing about the fact that Fucking Twister, the movie, is getting a sequel. And it's called Twisters. Ow, ow! Beans. What the fuck? Ah, oh, this is gonna be. As Frederick Durst warned us, it's just one of those days. I know!
you're gonna play me like this. I know I'm in danger. Where's the obelisk? Okay, so here's the car, which means there's the anchor. Love it. Love this for us. I don't even know how to make an electrician's kit. Might as well grab the anchor while we're here. It's just one of those days. I know! My car's mad at me because it doesn't like being left alone. Okay. Okay, okay! Quiet up. You got your tunes? Fine. Keep going on the roads. I don't I don't trust this area. Something about it is giving me the, the heebie jeebies. The heebs and or jeebs. And the road goes right past it, so we just stay the course. Jobs are good. the scary woods and guess what father father I crave violence the two the two modes of our little car oh it's a really good thing I never kept any mirrors in that garage better not to know if you've been teleported with your head on backwards the car's a little lightning but it'll buff out don't even worry about it. Okay. Pacific Drive, Cerveza Chrysler. <laughs> love it. Love it. I will say, the Cerveza memes have been giving me life this week. Don't ask me why the car is glowing, it just is. is becoming incredibly difficult. Radiation and whatever else is happening means the frame is ruined. How far we can stash our lab reports here. I feel like I should call them my lab reports because Paul's the one that wrote them but that might be a little bit too much of labouring a pun, you know. I 
was a good hole. Oh, and just as a quick FYI, if you didn't join us for the raid last night, so Paul, who is the writer on this, who used to be with, like, Shut Up and Sit Down and a bunch of other cool people, uh, also streams as Paul Chino on this Twitch.television. So, let's see how we're doing. Prepare the car if you're the tank. Charge the battery. Now, if I hit it with this, does that get rid of the lightning? Or do I just have to wait for this to, like, stop zinging? Uh, no fixed for the charge. Right. Well. This definitely needs some. Oh! Uh, to uh, whichever of you lovely, lovely mods threw that one in. Thank you kindly. Okay. So the doors are mostly okay. This is going to need two ceiling kits? Fuck! Right, how are the panels doing? Fine for the most part. Oh. Uh, I, for one, definitely support uh, more dead streaming. Streaming a game, even when you've worked on, is a very specific skill set. But let me tell you, it teaches you a lot about both your game and yourself. It's kind of like it almost forces you into a playtesting brain. A shifter as a, uh, a decal. Love it. <gasps> Cactus shifter as a little handle. That's even better. Oh, that would. Uh, Yeti, yeah, we can still see you, so you are all set. Uh, Angelus was saying they used to stream the game to each other in the studio Discord once every week or so. It's a good way to hang out and hear people's uh, individual nasty times from the zone. No, no, I, I think that's really fucking smart. Just got my little penguin. Excuse me. But why do we have 55 rubber ducks in storage? Do we have a swimming pool around here to release them into? Or do they have another use? Uh, I'm sorry, why do you not have 55 rubber ducks? Scotty, and again, I promise, I uh, apologize, I keep coming back to stories of, uh, of finances and whatnot, but you do need to understand that if it was up to me, I would have decorated this entire apartment complex in tiny ducks. Just, I just want you to know. <laughs> hey, time travel is real, Caffeine. And I'm glad you're having a good time with it. Um, sorry, Caffeine was saying that uh, EA put a bunch of their titles um, on sale, including Tiberium Sun. God, that game slapped. Alright, I need two uh, ceiling. Two ceiling kits. So that wheel is peculiar. God, I love this game. What does a peculiar wheel mean? <laughs> What's an aluminum falcon? Oh, there's more on next week's episode of Pacific Rim Drive. Pacific Drive Rim. Don't think about it too hard.
actually, that is a good point. We have one steel door that's a bit more beat up than the others. Yeah, so front left is knackered. So if we swap... So if we pop this in here, in our little, uh, little healing booth, if you will, I can go pick up this one from storage. There we go, live the dream. Now, I've often thought that there was something genuinely special about um, Tiberium Sun. I'm not in, I'm not a hundred percent sure what it is, but I know it is. Sorry, and that's a very vague way of putting it. But <sighs> but it's something that's been on my mind quite a bit recently, you know. Broken gas can. Fuel can. Zero. Wait. I got a bloody maker fuel cap. Hmm. You know what, capping that? That's definitely an interesting one because you're right. Like Tiberium Sun came out when. They were doing battle with Blizzard. God, it was such a different time. Oh man, it's actually cheaper for us to make more steel panels than it is. Sorry, um, I keep lapsing into, like, car build brain. But yeah, no, when you think about it, Tiberium Sun was them stepping to Blizzard in the pre-World of Warcraft days. Like, Warcraft 3 had definitely, like, shaped the landscape, but they made that big jump to, like, fully 3D. Whereas Tiberium Sun, to my knowledge, was still... Well, to my understanding, it was pre-rendered 3D. So it's still a 2D title but with pre-rendered visuals, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, no, the FMV cutscenes were exceptional. God, I remember when that was the standard. The irony of that everyone was copying Command and Conquer for those live-action stuff. Um, the Blizzard cinematics team obviously kicked ass back then, but... It's interesting that we can't reproduce armored doors. Then again, the insulated doors might not be a bad shell. Oh fuck, we might actually be able. If we don't biff our other stuff, we might be able to get the better engine at this point. Impulse emitter could be pretty powerful to get rid of bunnies. <laughs> Our Kathy was just adding that since Command and Conquer Tiberium Sun, we've come a long way in quality of life controls. Yep. Going back to play um, uh, classic Homeworld was I'm just going to say a lot. I'm getting us a better engine. Fuck it, I'm allowed. Yeah, it's so weird using arrow keys and mouse. Okay, so turbo light engine. Ah, we need shitloads of those thermosap crystals. All right, well, that was a complete waste of research. Uh, hopefully, we'll, uh, hopefully we'll find some stable stations we can hit. All right.
I don't have enough to learn how to make any of the insulated stuff. Uh, roof racks, maybe? No, we're out of stable energy. Biffed it all on that engine like a fool! Hydro generator, we don't have the space to put it. Oh, shit! Friends, miscreants, <laughs> villains and heroes, um, Playframe Plus has just uh, popped on in with, uh, let's see, 112 people! Well, Floydo, what a and welcome! Uh, we're putzing around on Pacific Drive. Um, don't worry if you're avoiding spoilers. We're just repairing the car at the moment and having a natter, so... Reactor online. Hey! Online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hi, Will. Can I come on your drive? Fuck yeah, you can. I've got space in the car and everything. Um, but yeah, so, cold ankles. Uh, S2? S2? Uh, the Ann map. Stop uh, that incessant clicking. Friends, villains, and heroes, what a welcome. Fearless, that's fucking cool of you, thank you. Um, so do we do we have a Floydo, or is he uh, leaving you here in my care? Because I'll be honest with you, I am going to teach you swear words. Uh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> nice try. I know I don't owe Floydo money. I think I am a pint, but I don't owe him money. <laughs> and Naru, what a welcome. Hello, hello. So, hey, Floydo, how are you doing, friend? Okay, so i got to say, I see that you've been on Pokemon Yellow a lot. Is this video research, or are you, do we need to worry about you? It's, it's a lot of retro Pokemon. <laughs> uh, Super Jaws says, Dan sometimes plays T and even M-rated games. We've heard of some heck words. <laughs> okay. Uh, funny story from uh, a thousand years ago while I've got your attention, friends. So, um, back before uh, uh, back before everything imploded, I used to uh, occasionally help out in the booth uh, at uh, PAX for Floydo stuff. And uh, I've done a couple of videos a thousand years ago for uh, Playframe, which I'm very proud of. And one of them was Sir, You're Being Hunted. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I half finish about eight stories and get scared a lot. But... I really enjoyed doing that. And at a PAX, uh, this last night kid came up and they were like, oh, hey, uh, you will. I'm like, oh, yeah. They were like, hey, we loved your playthrough of So You're Being Hunted. And I was like, oh, that's lovely. And especially when you think, like, you know, all the stuff that Floydo puts out on Playframe and things like that. Like, I felt like a massive compliment. And then, without skipping a beat, they added, but I did have to have the bad words conversation <laughs> with my kid. And I was like, oh no, I'm sorry I taught your kids swear words. So yeah. Um, some people have said that I've been bleeped more than any other guest on Playframe. I'm not sure if that's true. And if it isn't, should I get the chance, I will retake my crown. <laughs> uh, but Dan, good to hear you're doing good, friend. Thank you for bringing everybody over. Uh, so okay, so let me be uh, a bit of a cheesy host for a second. Hello! <laughs> um... If we haven't met, my name's Will. Uh, I've worked in video games for thousands of years after a witch cursed me to be involved in the games industry. Um, currently, I do this for a living. I, I stream on Twitch.television, um, but I also help out indie game teams. Uh, I'm currently working with one team making a game called Cosmic Crowbar, um, which is a lot of fun. Um, but I've been helping out loads of people. Um, if you are looking to make a game um, and you don't know where to start, I can help you with all of the non programmy stuff. And in the longship here, we do have some really skilled programmers. So if that's something that you want to do, come on down. Honestly, I just kind of use games as a vehicle to talk about the industry. Now, the game we are playing is Pacific Drive, inspired by the same, inspired from the same book that inspired the Stalker series, Roadside Picnic. You are in the Pacific Northwest with your beat up station wagon thing here that you must build on, improve, and maintain as you travel out into the zone. An SCP-esque, okay, closer to like a control, 
this ever-shifting landscape walled in in the uh, the Olympic Peninsula. Um, you and your little car must go out, find goodies, and make it back alive. And there are lots of anomalies out there that do not want to see you make it back. Uh, there's no shooty gun bang. There's also no um, food and water and sleep mechanics. So it's just keeping you alive and keeping your car running. Um, if you like the idea of this, but find the idea of like roguelike elements or survival stressful, there is a ton. Like I cannot understate how many uh, accessibility options this game has. You can just turn this into well, not a walking sim because you're driving, and not a driving sim because it's not a racing game. But you know what I mean. You can remove damage to you, damage to your car, all of those, if you just want to play this as a peaceful exploration game. Uh, Naru, I don't think we've settled on a good car name. Because there was definitely one we came up with, but if I can't remember it, I mean, it wasn't good. It's mostly been Dustin coming up with names for each of these little streams. Because uh, we had, like, uh, The Vanishing of Ethan's Car, and uh, What Became of My Summer Car was another good one. Uh, this one is um, a Cardew Valley. Uh, that we're drowning in good names for the next one. So yeah, friends, it's lovely to see you. And um, so Dan, yeah, we're doing good over here. Um, I got emotionally broken by these lovely motherfuckers. <laughs> How about the vehicle for conversation? Ah, uh, now you're thinking of Paul's. <laughs> now you're thinking of Paul's. Um. So yeah, if you're interested in watching this game, uh, we're not going to be hitting any story beats anytime soon. So again, if you want to avoid spoilers, you're you're going to be safe for at least another like half hour, hour depending on how poorly I do. Also, I've got to repair this poor car. This poor car. Oh, and two variable systems. Thank you kindly for the follow. So yeah, so that's me. Um... I don't know what else to say. Uh, I'll, if we haven't met, I'll tell you before these buggers do. Um, my one claim to fame is that I voiced a character in a Sonic racing game. I am Willemus the Roman in Sonic and Friends All-Star Racing Transformed. I don't advertise this fact, but I know that if I don't tell you, these cheeky buggers will. So I'm just, I'm just going to own it. <laughs> I'm just going to own it. Um, right. God, more chemicals. Alright, let's see what's on the grid. Oh yeah, so the other hook of this game, where the kind of like the roguelike element comes in, is you have to essentially pick where you're heading. Right? Uh, you have these... Ooh, I love that. These scannable anchors. There's a little bit of stuff there, but it's safe, so we can hoover that up. Okay, so as you progress in the game, you basically plot your part. If you play through control, you're familiar with the idea of like reality anchors. That all of these different areas shift and change, so it's never the same as you return. But what you can do is you can place you can hit these scanner charges. Now this little peaceful dove here, what that means is that this area here, E4, will always be safe. That one's going to be foggy. No idea what that's going to be. Uh, cold ankles. No one has, and I hope they never do. Um... Uh, so what we need to do at the moment is we need to hoover up specifically like chemicals and stuff like that. We need to be able to, like... What we're trying to do, friends, is get here. Uh, so, ideally, we want the Midnight Forest. But we want the Midnight Forest once whatever this anomaly is out of the way. Because that will just fucking destroy us. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Zavara. Kemakusi. Ah. Uh, Go straight to the Shadow Realm. Think about what you just spent $2 to show everyone. Okay, so Zavara, 
Uh, I used to work for the Creative Assembly. Um, they're the team behind the Total War series. Also Alien Isolation, but I worked on Total War. During the run-up to Rome 2, I was told that I was going to be a promotional material. I wasn't really asked, and we were in the middle of crunch, so I didn't really think about it. But basically, we got... Um, I guess we basically we got told that this was a thing that was happening. So they took a bunch of photos of my face, and I did a bunch of like VO recording at work. Forgot about it, and then months later, uh, one of my friends DM'd me and went, "You know, you're a dickhead." I'm like, "What for?" It's like you just overtook me in Sonic. I'm like, "What?" So yeah, I'm Willemus the Roman. It's my dumb face and voice. Um, and the reason I'm telling you is not to flex. Um, it is because if I don't tell you, these dingleberries will. Neo, what can I say? We've all been hanging out far too long. Remember, you can pack mules, but you cannot jug mules. There's a difference between can and should, Akira Zero. There's a big difference between can and should. <sighs> Cards. One of the cold ankles, the worst bit is that um, during... I can't remember if it was Longship Day or for some reason we did a we did we had played that Sonic game here, and whilst driving around as myself, I don't know I think I wrecked like Shadow's Day or something with a homing missile or the equivalent of a homing missile, and I went ha ha ha, and then my character made the exact same laugh. That is haunting. It wasn't even intentional. Because the thing is like. I'm not a voice actor per se. I've done voices for games, but that's just kind of, that's fun, right? That's not. All right, I think I know what our path is. It's there, it's there, and then maybe there. Caffeine's got it on quick draw. One, two, three, four. Alright, we'll make some putty. But again, the idea is we need more chemicals and caffeine. Alright. Fucking terrors. The lawyer! says the most viewed clip on this channel. Really? Like, more so than the, um... Oh, I guess we did kind of hide the, uh... The Turbo Play one. Uh, TLDR, I did a... I did a promotional event for a company a thousand years ago. And during that event, they announced that they were going to be releasing uh, some never-before-seen MechWarrior content. And I got that live on Twitch. Um, and before you start getting excited or thinking like, oh shit, that sounds awesome, don't. Uh, TLDR, uh, it sadly never ended up happening. Uh, the company in question... What is that? Uh, back door. Uh, the company in question sadly um, disappeared without trace. Which was very sad. So we had high hopes for them. But yeah, so again, like, um, I can't imagine there's anyone here from my lot that doesn't know Floydo, but just on the off chance. Um, if you're not following Playframe, uh, please do. Um, 
It's terrifying that uh, I have known Floydo for over 10 years now as uh, I was telling PAX stories and I realised that um, Floydo and I met back in PAX of 2013. Actually, okay, is there anybody that hasn't heard the story of how Floydo and, ended up, and I ended up being friends? Um, because it involves loading ready run uh, and copious amounts of alcohol. <laughs> Moonstick. No, you not heard this story? All right. Well, congratulations. You are you are a great excuse for me to retell this. So, um, again, it all kind of comes back to Rome too a little bit. Uh, oh, you haven't heard it? Okay. Well, story time with Will before we before we hit the road. Okay. So, back when I was working at the Creative Assembly, my job was outreach, which is like proto influencer relations. My job was to find people on YouTube and in other spheres outside of traditional gaming media, so outside of journalists um, and news outlets, to find people that really like their game, our game, or would like it. So, you know, I was already a huge fan of, you know, everybody in varying forms on your job. So I was set for it. Um, throughout the campaign, like, I contacted a whole bunch of people, and I... I had reached out to, well, to Floyd, I should say, Floydo's team. Um, and we had some little chats around PAX, and you know what? Like, it, it was, PAX 2013 was my very first PAX, and I loved it. I was already obsessed with the idea of PAX. I watched the documentaries back when Penny Arcade TV was a thing. Like, I was a fan of this convention before I went. So you got to understand, I spent four days moving around at Mark III, being hyped, excitable, it was fucking great. Uh, I went to the concerts, I met his friends, had the best time. And after we finished takedown, as in after we finished taking down the booth on the final day, the, the Monday of PAX, um, a good friend of mine who worked at Savior America was like, all right, you'll need food and a beer. I'm taking you to a place that's just far enough away. So we went to the Pine Box. The Pine Box is a bar in Seattle that is based, it, is, it used to be an old mortuary, which is why it's called the Pine Box. And it's famous for having shitloads of, like, independent, interesting beers and stuff like that. Uh, Varials, yeah, I don't even... <laughs> I don't know how you've missed this. I'm, I'm glad I get to tell you, but... Anyway, so we go up there, god-tier mac and cheese, and I think I had this beer that was called, like, Ollie Outie into a Wookiee or something, and we're all kind of, like, recovering. Um, the rest of the CA squad's kind of getting tired, so they're like, you know what? We're gonna tap out for the evening, and... I stayed drinking with my, my buddy from Sega until... I started. I noticed something. Out of the corner of my eye, I see like Graham and Kathleen and a bunch of people go past me and into a little area like in their like out deck. And I was like, "Huh, I wonder what that is." So I finished my food. And I was like, Yo, "Julian, should we check this out?" So we totter on over there, and they're like, "Oh yes, this is a charity beer tasting. It's twenty-five dollars in, and it's all donated beers from around the Seattle region, all with nerdy names." And you. Just, drink what you want I'm like $25 drink what I want <laughs> I hope you understand what you're offering here um, and we go on in there and it's all of the peeps um, uh, Dan and Carrie were there a bunch of other like you know proto Dan squad um, the loading ready run crew was there uh, and it was feckin' brilliant tried all the beers got chatting with everybody and then kind of as the charity event curtailed off. Uh, okay, also there was a pink grapefruit, a free, a pink grapefruit uh, IPA that I fell in love with. Because I hadn't experienced IPAs prior. Now they hurt my tum tum. But at the time I was blown away that beer could taste good. Uh, so I just start feasting this. Once the event ended, they just put the kegs behind the bar and you could just buy them normally. Now I've got a budget for entertainment, so you better believe I'm doing that. And I'd struck up a conversation with Dan and other peeps. We just kind of had one of the tables outside. And so, I don't know, I was just, I was super in love with this particular beer. And I was like, hey, you know what? Fuck it, I'm getting around. And I would do this multiple times. Like, I'm getting around, what does everybody want? Because buying rounds in the UK is pretty common. You know, it's a, it, it's kind of like a, like a shared camaraderie. But <laughs> what I didn't realize at the time was that uh, Floydo and Carrie aren't like drinkers, drinkers, right? 
they were just being very polite because this excitable British person kept buying them alcohol and wasn't <laughs> they didn't want to say no. So we ended up closing that place out, just drinking there until like until close, like two o'clock in the morning. And for some reason <laughs> for some reason the Floydos have have kept me around since then. Um, there's there's more stories of drunken chaos, but we'd like to save those for another night. But no, it was fucking great. You know. And it's just, it's wild to think that that was over 10 years ago, you know what I mean? <sighs> and so yeah, um, I've gotten to do a few cool things with, uh, with Floydo over the years. Um, the Soy being hunted was real cool. Uh, I showed, uh, I showed off my Sega bass fishing skills. Uh, and for a bit, uh, me and Fred did a little show called uh, Will and Fred's Excellent Adventure, which was, you know what, I'm still real proud of that. Uh, Fred cheated and destroyed me at XCOM multiplayer, uh, and we both threw, well, okay, technically I threw uh, Heihachi's kid off a mountain in Tekken. Technically I was playing and Fred was commenting, but that's not the point. That's not the point. <laughs> There's so much of games industry, and I guess all of this as a whole, that really does come from just everybody's a big fan of everybody else's stuff. I think that's the thing that kind of it definitely keeps me going in a lot of video game stuff is like it's a group of people that really are fans of each other's work. You know, it's not like LA. Where, you know, a lot of people will be like, Oh my god, I love your stuff, that's so good. Uh, you know, where you can hear the insincerity of my life. You know. In video games, people really do care. And, I don't know, there's something real special about that. Okay, so, make sure I got the car all sorted. Alright. So at the moment we've got uh, this little doohickey, which as we drive it helps charge our battery. Uh, this is where I'm just keeping our repair kits. Um, I've got a little castle on the bonnet. Uh, I don't want to paint it anymore because we'll probably end up in trouble. Oh, and this thing's fucking cool. So this is a lightning rod that when we would be shocked it uh, transfers any like angry lightning into our battery. She's lovely. <sighs> Sorry, um, <laughs> I was just looking at uh, how many lovely folks we have hanging out right now, and I was like, huh, if this keeps going, uh, Mr. The Twitch will have to acknowledge me, and at that point, I will have to play Raft, and I'd rather not do that. <laughs> Uh, Naru, we're working on the time travel unlock. It's going to be a little while before uh, we can go over 88 miles per hour. Not to be confused with Tails Miles Per Hours. Which I was in my 30s when I found out that was a pun. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> I'm still mad. <laughs> yeah, Holy Bus Crusader. Angry Lightning is more powerful than regular lightning. Okay, so we've got Perpetual stability. Hello, baby boy. Hello, baby boy. I can't really never want to hang out no more. Amos, you want to come say hi? Oh, sleepy boy, you want to come say hello? <laughs> you just want to get away with stuff. Sorry. And I guess if you're new here, uh, this is our youngest pup, Amos. He's a great big sweetheart. You come say hello? Come say hello? Come up here? You come up here? Hello? Yay! Hello, baby boy. How are you doing? How are you doing? All right, all right. You come. Oh, oh, that's my shoulder. All right. Good boy. Good boy. Yours. Uh, he is a big boy, though, and <laughs> I am not strong enough to lift him. 
you always say hello. Always say hello. No, no, we're not jumping up now. No, don't eat the friendo. <laughs> oh. I don't know if I've got any other like road stories while we're uh, while we're getting up to mischief. Uh, and Naru, thank you for filling the pint glass. You're okay, Amos. You're okay. One of the downsides about streaming for a living is that I don't remember what stories I have told, and I assume that I've already told you everything. So, I can't exactly ask you, hey, what, what stories have I not told you? Alright, what have we got? Okay, so we definitely need to go there. We might as well hit here. So, alright, let's. we're just going to stock up on stability energy now, because... This area is stable, meaning that this area won't um, start imploding unless we make it. Oh, Vernflo, I haven't told you about the thing. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Sorry, Kathy was just saying one literal road story was uh, when we did. we did uh, Seattle to San Jose in one straight drive. Because uh, we were hitting TwitchCon and we decided to kind of do it on a whim. Uh, and Caffeine was already driving. Oh, yes. Don't worry, I've got this. Check this out. Aha! Are we? I know. Oh, fucking buddies! Shit! Oh, you fucking dare. I don't see you. Uh, sorry, these are broken bunnies. Well, they don't directly harm your car. Uh, what they do is they just take over and turn all the buttons on. That's it. Um, oh! And, uh, Nara, if you hadn't seen them, uh, those Weeping Angel-looking uh, crash test dummies are called tourists. And they are terrible. <coughs> they are the worst! make electrician's kits yet so I can't <laughs> fix uh, one of the other fun things about this game is that as you play through your car can develop quirks because of being exposed to anomalies and the fact that it may or may not be sentient as well don't, just don't think about it too much okay These are feckin' fun. So things like, with this car at the moment, if I ever uh, reverse, the bonnet pops open for no reason. It just does. Well, so Megalyn, the tourists are easy to deal with, sort of. The lightning tourists are not. They are very bad. Uh, at the moment, we're just kind of exploring, but we desperately need our uh, chemicals. Alright, so we... Yeah, so we really want to kind of head into town this way. 
Oh, well, Naru, uh, tell them I say hello back. So yeah, uh, again, friends, if you all got any questions about this game, please ask. I am having the best time, and no joke, and I can't recommend it enough. Like, this game can be whatever you want it to be. You know, if, if you're playing it as I am, which is kind of more of the, the unmodified experience, You have this kind of almost roguelike survival. It's this. Sorry, I've been seeing this on the map multiple times today. This is my first time coming to it. I don't know what it is. Mysterious audio recording. press coverage of limb technology is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at first. In the decade between 1955 to 1965, Lim is called many things. The promise of the future, the herald of a new age, the never spoken of again. You don't have to dig very deep for the gaps in the story to emerge. The presidential demonstration is the only physical proof we ever see of it. Compared to the Manhattan Project, developed under airtight shroud of secrecy, why was Lim paraded around in the papers? And if it really was the technological quantum leap to answer all our wildest dreams, why did it blink out of existence? Hmm. The story of Lim technology is one hell of a maze, and the key to it is a woman named Dr. Ophelia Turner. Did <coughs> Ophelia Turner, by all measure a failed physicist as far as her public record goes, truly invent Lim technology? Or was she held up as a Rosie the Riveter for the Cold War? An atomic Annie to excite the masses during the no-holds-barred race against the Soviet Union? Was she a myth, martyr, or monster? A figment of the imagination? True savior? Or a convenient scapegoat? I'm Chiaki Saruhashi, and in this nine-part series, <laughs> I aim to find out. And in this YouTube, uh, <laughs> in this YouTube essay, I will. <laughs> Play Nora. I don't know what the potato cup is, but I'll be honest with you, I'm intrigued. Are we done for fuel? Oh, fucking great. Oh, okay, so Fern Flow. Have a lovely rest of your evening, and again, it's fucking great hanging with you. Uh, Megalu was just pointing out they don't turn off achievements if you tweak the difficulty. Yes. Now, the reason I love that is because it kind of says it's about the journey, which, in a game about driving, the irony of that sentence is not lost on me. But that it's not about... It's not about beating it, it's about having to try and have a very specific experience. And it's amazing when you think, oh, buddies! Get away! Uh, no! No, you little shit! I know. Get off me, fucking car! Listen here, you little shits. Might as well check out this house while we're here, right? Okay. Oh, I should say, uh, last but by no means least, to those of you that have come over from Playcraft, if we haven't met before, uh, there is one thing that I do pride myself on, and that is video game recommendations. So, if you find your... I mean, I can't imagine why you would be right now, because we're drowning in good games, regardless of what your flavour is, but... If for some reason you are... Oh, it's the floor. I thought that train was doing weird shit. Sorry. Uh, if you do find yourself hurting for, for video games... 
then I am very sure that I can recommend you something. It is a skill I have uh, mastered over many years, and I'm very proud of it. Uh, video game sommelier is how I like to describe myself. Oh, Ishkar. It's science. Gordon Freeman didn't invent crowbar science. He merely got his thesis in it. This though. Okay, so we are here. Oh, that storm is going to go right past this. Alright, so we need to hit the crossroads down at the end. And then we need to take a left. Just go nice and slow. Don't have to mess with it. Just nice and slow. This is fine. I oh, know, uh, Hitchcock, like, I'm... Helldivers 2, its success and everything makes me so happy. And again, I am more than willing to admit that I was wrong. I personally predicted that Helldivers 2 was going to be uh, more of a disaster, and it wasn't. So... these guys go bye-bye. And I've got just the thing. It's called Hadouken! No uh, crystals for us. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna level with you varials. They're not they're not coming back at the same state you left them. I'm just I'm just gonna tell you that now. Ooh, here we go. Uh, this is a research truck. That's a board. Right, now. On the door. Steel door. Beans. Fuel tanks for the empty. Alright. Well, let's hit the farms. See what we can grab. Bring the car forward. Yeah, no winch wanker this time as well, which I'm very grateful for. Although, this is like part one of a three leg journey, and it could get spicier. Like, Matey Boy here is very enjoying flexing on us. So, Ishgar, this was something I think that's worth discussing. I don't think Helldivers 2 is a good streaming game. I, I think it's a great experiential game, but... Oh, man, it's up with all of these fucking tourists. I mean, it's fine, like, we can handle them now, but... Man. I do very much need the thermosat crystal, so worth it but still. That's creepy. Um, and I think that's something that is interesting to discuss. Like what kinds of games stream well and what ones don't, and how that can influence it. One thing that I'd say about Helldivers 2 is it's incredibly mimetic because of the whole super earth 
flavoured nonsense. It gives people a really good space to play in. For like for, for the crafting of the good jokes. But what games do and don't stream well is such a Okay, Nebulous is the wrong word. It's a very complicated topic, right? Because a game that streams poorly played by someone with a massive audience will still do okay, right? You know, there's loads of things that say... The Game Grunts, for example, will do. That most people doing the same thing, it wouldn't... It wouldn't go on reviewership. People wouldn't necessarily want to watch that. Oh, man. Fucking spun around in this fucking fog. Oh, there we go. There's the car. Sorry. Go back and check the house. Ah, <laughs> uh, now, uh, Varials. That is a very, very good point. Uh, so, for those who don't know, um, so Varials uh, made a game called The Void Reigns Upon Her Heart. Um, it was recently ranked one of Steam's most hidden gems, and it is an exceptional game. Uh, a mashup of Hades Slay the Spire type roguelike with a with a bullet hell book. Uh, the reason why I say Hades is it absolutely does the um, storytelling that utilizes roguelike mechanics as part of the experience, and was technically doing it before Supergiant. You know, that's still impressive. We need to go here. Uh, then we're gonna hit those two anomalies and get the fuck out of dodge. Right. Um, so yeah, friends, if you haven't seen it, please do check out the Void Raids Upon an R on Steam. Because that's the play. You know what? It's when the car bonnet closes, it turns on the cab light. That's it. Um but no, so uh, what Varials was saying is that one of the games, the game genres that doesn't stream well is Bullet Hell. So that's very true. And you're right, but it's because it puts the, uh, call them the stream, uh, our, our presenter, our broadcaster's mind into a kind of like a, a hyper focus state, which is great for gameplay, terrible for conversation. Now, obviously, it does change dependent on what kind of individual is streaming the game, right? Like, I I know we covered The Void Reigns on Our Heart a thousand years ago. I couldn't do it more. Like, Shelby's got a good practice pattern down when it comes to it, but... Well, that's not coming back. That's why I haven't been getting crystals from the tourists, is that when I explode them, they yeet all the goodies. Fuck. Um... But, like, Chorby's got a good practice pattern down when it comes to it. But, ah, uh, I can't even get into this one! <sighs> Varial says they hear I can't play and talk a lot at the same time. That's true. And some games that work like that, the game can take over. With Bullet Hells, they're very experiential. You know, that meditative state in a Bullet Hell game, that's a desirable state for the player. So, you don't want to detract from that at all. It's like, you're, you're winning. If your game, it like, gets people to experience that. So, yeah. It's just, it's one of those complicated things, right? A lot of things in the video games world are very clear-cut, right? But there are others where... An initial factor can override a poor choice. Um, sorry, I... I don't mean to keep bringing up Tarkov. I'm sorry. I'm only bringing it up because it annoys me intensely. And the thing is, like, Tarkov is a bad game. It is a well-made game, but it is a bad video game. But because it's the only one in its space, it gets to experience a level of success that most other titans won't, right? 
So you can't use it as an example or a case study or something that you should em uh, emulate because that's a bad idea. Don't emulate that. Don't emulate the stupids. Oh, Naru. Okay, sorry. I, I'm not saying that it is necessarily bad, as in a terrible game you should not play, but it is a badly designed game. Great systems, uh, you know, a massive technical success, but in terms of, like, a game for people to play, it's terrible bad. And at some point, I am gonna stop talking to you off about it and make a fucking video or something, because I do repeat myself a lot on this topic. There's two power sets here, so we're going to do essentially two laps. Don't you irradiate me, don't you. we get it done. It's weird how the tourists are made of like plastic and anomalous materials, not like stone. Um, shit, I think how we got onto this topic. Oh, games that stream well. Like, because it can be extremely difficult if you try and sit down and design something specifically for the purpose of streaming well, right? Next one of those. Yeah, no. One's enough. There's a fucking storm coming. Um. Oh, yeah, sorry. Jumping back, jumping back. Uh, the, the gentleman we're talking, very nice we're talking about, uh, is uh, Solon. Uh, sorry, it's Chorby SP on this Twitch television, and they're a very good streamer. Someone who I watch a lot of in the evenings. And yet, yeah, there are certain games that you can basically practice until you reach the point of being able to stream. But no, time to stop. Uh, with me personally, uh, I find that it's the slower-paced games that I have no problem with. You know, I can fill the air with banter. But, um, what's, card games I cannot stream. So, like, that's one of the reasons I haven't streamed uh, Balotaro. It's because I, I can't. I physically can't. Uh, I do have a problem with some 4X games because... Man, stopped right on our arms. I hate this. Um, oh, brains! Just because I get so into them that it's not a case of I'm having a bad time. 
This guy's having too much fucking fun. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Oh shit, the bed. Fuck. Oh, come the fuck on! Was a little janky, but we're good. Good. Oh. Yeah, I've never encountered a pillar storm before. Okay, we're going to head to the Adra site, which is apparently an anchor party. Because one, we can always use more anchors, and two, there's a crap load of good stuff here. So hopefully I can make enough to repair it. Uh... Uh, sorry, jumping back, jumping back. Um, Immortal End says they started playing the, the Void Reigns on her heart three weeks ago. They managed to get 31% of the game. Good on you. Um, Ishkar, you're right. Fighting games have a very similar problem. Unless you are very good at... Sorry. Unless you're very good at communicating what you're doing, or you're already a very successful fighting game player. Um, oh, Kesha was just saying they can't stop talking when they play games. Nice little bear. No end. I do it when the dogs are around. Like, I'll just be out walking the dogs and I will narrate what we get up to. Okay. So we need to go there. And possibly there. Uh, we're good for anchors. Okay, so we just follow this road through until we hit the gas station where we'll stock up and go from there. Alright. Sorry. Had to plan on route. Uh, just Angelus was also saying that another game they worked on was called Only Cans. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's on Steam. And oh boy, it's an experience. Um, but in theory, like Only Cans isn't an engaging game in terms of what happens. It is, yeah, for all intents and purposes, a movie of sorts. But it's very engaging stream-wise because it's very funny. And that's, it's kind of an experiential humour. Uh, sorry, it's very um, uh, observable humour, not experiential. Um, uh, and when I say experiential, I promise I'm not just trying to be a, you know, wanky bastard. Um, experiential refers to something that... Playing it is drastically different than watching it. So when I say, like, Helldivers is a fun game, it's experientially fun with some, like, meme moments. Whereas... I'm trying to think of one I watch a lot. Um, Subnautica is an experience where what you're watching and what the person is experiencing... Oh, God! What the fuck is this conga line shit? of Animu, I refuse. Ah! Whee! And this is just on principle. That's a good point. I wonder if I can set these up. Oh, here we go! Alright, so this is an abandoned squire. We got a steel, steel, a wooga. That's a one armored door, one armored panel. Alright, let's see how the car's doing, because we can only take one thing. Alright, where's the car going? Oh! 
of that for us. How's the car looking? Uh, oh, the bonnet and the door is fucked. All right, well, let's see which one's most fucked. All right, so that's... The hood panel's doing all right. The rear car is doing better. All right, we're going to take the panel. We're turning this into a, a beastie beast. It's fucking gold. Let's stash our stuff. Then let's fucking go. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you're wondering what these yellow anomalies are, they are go faster buttons. <gasps> we got both! Oh, this is the best. the number of orbs increasing. Like, I'm not going completely loopy, am I? Ah, yeah, burials. Um, I'm real sorry, I thought you were... Uh, I thought you knew. Uh, uh, it is rear right door. So that's the other one that needs swapping out. some putty on them. Love to see it. My little mismatched fight car here. Oh, that is a radiation spot. Let's get out. Kestrel just managed to find uh, Ebony's Longhorn in Elden Ring. The ultimate in duty. Yeah, car goes meow. Fucking wee. Fucking meow. No, we are not shitting in ourselves back into big dance. Okay. Come on down to big dance. We've got Dan. And also Dan. No! Oh, I just gotta hope the winch fucker doesn't come over this way. Fucker seems genuinely disinterested. Man, I need to I need to get more flares. Also, is that a fucking UFO? It fucking is! Angelos, a Angelos. We got, we got to talk.
I swear, if this turns into like a horrifying reimagining of no, more horrifying reimagining of no, uh, I will scream. And not like a cool scream either, like a jump scared surprise Ned Flanders scream. And I bust into the loo and I don't even need anything. Okay. So we are here, right? Uh, so we need to hang a left on the roads. And head up round towards the research parks there and Oh, actually there's more research parks further up. But either way. Personal, you shit! Gave you a fucking flare, what do you want from me? Welcome to Big Dance, where we've got distractions and a busted hood. I'm not gonna lie, friends, this area is pretty dumb. That is not. What is it? Can I even can I see it proper? It's fucking moving, I swear. It's not the storm. Alright, well, we've just gotta hope that it's not gonna fucking jean jacket us. <laughs> it's just a little guy. It's just a big little guy. Don't even worry about it. This is me. This is my worrying phase. Okay. Now yeah, well, the storm's passing along the side as we're doing alright. Don't worry about it. That was uh, our little... That was our lightning rod doing its job. That less so. I'm just going out the fucking ground today. Okay. Let's have a look. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep going forward. We're not actually going to go up to the hook. Instead of going that way, we're going to aim to go this way. Because this right here, that's up on the bridge. That's not good for us. Um, we need to hit as many science facilities as possible because what we're lacking again is these chemicals. Which are extremely useful. Where's the storm going? Do we have time to stop here? I was going to stop and get some of the lead plating there, but that's not safe. Oh, beans! Fuck! Don't even worry about it. So yeah, so basically what we're doing now is instead of going down to the town, we're going to head up to the research park up here but not the same research park that we went to when we did the big jump. So we're not going to, bl uh, to glowing big red there. I'm going to hit these facilities up here because... Oh, you absolute dude, bastards! Because that's what we're in need of. 
Shit. Alright, friends, that's the fucking klaxon. Alright, maybe we can hit one of those facilities. Now, we don't have to make it out via... Um, a portal, but we do have to make it out. is this? Mike is dead on purpose, I swear. Alright, so the only thing we need uh, is chemicals. So we're looking for just these things here. One, two, three. Love it. Uh, everything else is superfluous. Uh, that big alarm that we heard is the... Ah, I'll put that. Uh, the big alarm that we heard is this area kind of coming to a close. Uh, once that happens, it's going to be like a basically like a PUBG sprint out. You know what? Honestly, by this point, you'll know. If you've got questions, ask me. Just uh, forgive me while I look nervous because I am. doesn't matter. Not chemicals doesn't matter. Uh, and once we clear this out, we're just going to fucking peg it. Uh, do you have chemicals in? No, you're a clothing locker. All right. Okay. Time to go. Eat that! Was this great big bollard just there? Oh, I was about to be like, where's the fucking car? Where's the fucking car? Get the back of the van! how we get unstable anchors. They just appear. Bastard. Anyway, there's no way we could get that and survive. That's that's a fucking death sentence. But now we know. So those are things that will appear. Alright. There's the next facility. Right. Do you know what I would like for this is, and this is like a money no question, infinite development budget kind of thing, second screen, so that you can play with somebody and they can essentially work as your side driver. But as I'm sure you know, friends, that would be a massive amount of work. Seat driver edition. It's not a bad shower. You know, a large proportion of this game is making these panic decisions, and having somebody else yell at you would make it funnier and possibly worse, but in the best way.
Yeah, also having somebody who can control the tunes and uh, uh, in cab lights and stuff while you're bombing it around the, the greater Seattle region. We are clear. Alright. Okay, so oh shit, that was just a midway point. You know what, burials, actually a two-player mode where one person is just the car and one person is the person would be very funny. Even if one person only drives and one person only does the people stuff. Because they have to work together, right? Alright. What have we got? Alright, we've got a couple of facilities and an anchor, so let's just blitz through this. Jobs are good and We'll do uh, repairs in the ilk once we get closer towards the uh, the end segment. The car's feeling a little sluggish, but that could just be after we went meow. Because we did go fucking meow. I do like our little shouty gear shift. I'm always a fan of chaotic Twitch integration. But honestly, without like killing yourself, that's, I do apologize, I should use a better turn of phrase there. What I mean is without creating so much work for you and your team that it's infeasible. Honestly, just chat with the people over at um, uh, Crowd Control. Uh, it's Jaku, uh, the person who runs that, it's really fucking cool. And is absolutely down to work with uh, with teams. is giving me the heebie-jeebies. It's this like afternoon fog. I'm absolutely going to crash into something. We went through too much. <laughs> 69 viewers. Nice, 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 nice. Of course, as soon as you said that, it went to 68. But also, yes. uh, so there's a facility up there. Oh, we've been through here before on a story beam. No, it's not worth going up there. If we're going to risk it for a biscuit, we'll risk it for a valuable biscuit, you know what I'm saying? Oh, good. Oh, I love this for us. I've got an idea. Let's not stop here. Is there another... Shit, there is another gas station. Alright. I hear it. Don't even worry about it. we go. What are these people running from? They're not. They're running to the most extreme elimination challenge. Whew. Fucking scary. Whew. Ah, good. Uh, that 
that is heavily irradiated to hit the next one. Can you run out and grab that anchor as well? Oh, it's right the fuck there. Alright, it would be criminal to leave that. Leave the engine on. Systems are fried, but the batteries are good. Okay, I got absolutely spun around there. All right. <laughs> Indeed, my own personal driving sunglasses. Okay, we got this. Sorry, uh, with the shifting uh, landscape here of the uh, this anomalous zone, sometimes we enter into areas we've already been but they're kind of like backwards and upside down and a bit fucking weird hopefully just take a breather Whew. oh this is in the first place oh we can't get in bastard right, maybe we'll find some chemicals around this way Generating more. Anyway, sorry. Wasn't everything that I was hoping we'd get here, but. I could have been much worse. Been a lot worse. <laughs> well, I do know that if we can find a repair station when we're out and about, that'll be good. Well, no, so at the moment, Fearless, we're... Chemicals is just one of our bottlenecks. I guess it's chemicals and super shiny crystals as well. So. <sighs> I guess I am kind of musing out loud. Um, but. We've got the feature, feature. We've got the thing back at base that allows us to stash pieces to repair them while we're out on a run, which is pretty good.
So if I remember right, like, that's a repair and charge station. So yeah, basically we hit this one, we hit this cul-de-sac, come round, hit that, try and hit some of these. We can do this. We can do this. I want to anchor nice and early on, love to see it, love to see it. feels personal. Ah, see, we can remake Repair Party, but this was the stuff I was trying to stash, you know? Front right. What are the messed up ones? I don't, I don't like seeing our pieces of red right? these two panels. But that's the thing, we haven't even tried getting out of the fucking zone yet. Of course we need to go exactly where all that nonsense is. <sighs> Uh, Jax, emotionally, great. Uh, mechanically, the forces of the anomalous zone are out to fucking get me tonight. Oh, God. Don't worry about it. old facility. Could be loads of stuff in here. <laughs> One bottle of chemicals. Now I can retire. Bit of a random question. Has anyone been watching uh, True Detectives? As I recently finished the most uh, recent one. Uh, it is as good as everyone said it was going to be, no surprise there. But it's interesting how... I don't know. I feel like taking... Oh, it's just one great big round facility. Alright, I love that. It feels like it's taken a lot, a lot of cues from, like, video gamery flavoured nonsense. And I kind of love that. <laughs> I 
Every time. Every fucking time. Right. The road. Oi! The road! Where'd you go? Oh, actually, I should have second thoughts about that. Let's not take the road, it's a silly place. Fuck. Kind of. Is, this is what Subnautica must be like for people that aren't. that don't have thalassophobia, right? Like the, the stress, the panic, it's all very real. This is just a charging stop. I thought we encountered one that actually did like repair our car. Or am I just losing my marbles? Are you stressed? I'm stressed. seen better days, but for the most part, we're doing all right. Okay. Some funky fresh paint and a speed stripe. Headlights, headlights ain't shit. Uh, oh, where's that storm going? Oh, shit down my leg. Right. Well, there's an anchor. But we do anyway. Oh, uh, how's that for a fucking bonnet hole? Woo! This is this is bad. This is bad. We are in a bad time. Lost the road. I've lost the plot. Still alive. I fucking knew it! Mimic twat! So <laughs> I'm gonna have some kind of episode. I 
having a good time, having a good time. All right, honestly, I, I think I'm doing very badly. I think I need to cut my losses. Right. Oh, that's what fucked me up. Oh, I couldn't go around that. Not ready for this. Okay. Alright, so once we hit the road. I think I need to get, like, insulated. I gotta get insulated here. Alright, well, this isn't the route I wanted to take, but we'll take it anyway. Where we're headed. We've got to get out of here. Any more of this Faffamancy and we won't survive it. Sad we can't hit that, but needs must and all that. Fuck it. Fuck your couch! on a bike. Whew. Is she time to start drinking yet? No, interesting thing Grandma, about those anchor plugs. They use limb technology to stake down pockets of stability in an area. Basically, they delay how quickly you're turned into Swiss cheese out there. Can't help but feel, Grandma. This is not a fair exchange. Oh. Hey, look, we made it through, all right? For all intents and purposes, we should not have. Front right doors need toast. And we don't have enough armor. We don't have enough um, resources to... Yeah, we don't have enough resources to stash all of the uh, plastics. Uh, oh my god, my brain's gone! It's fried! What I was trying to say to you all is we don't have enough plastic to repair all this, so we'll have to work something out. I think it's going to be a little bit of a second before we start our next run, don't you? <laughs> And breathe. Uh, but we did pick up a potato cup. Sounds real cute. <sighs> Seriously, my heart's going like a fucking mile an hour. You're not going to be okay.
it's a cutscene. Somebody uh, wanna, I don't know, ask me about video games or something else? I didn't I can't go back out there until my heart calms down. I thought I had absolutely busted our car there. some decal. I'm putting some retro on this. We've got a little bit of a little bit of party left. Front right door. Okay, front right door is just a steel door. We'll make another door. You know? That's actually better for us reasons wise. The only things we can't replace are armored panel on the hood. And I guess this armored door as well. Okay. The rest we can work on. Oh, so cold ankles, thank you for asking. Uh, are there any games that people are looking forward to that don't involve Will's heart rate going a thousand miles an hour? Uh, Bacon has Star Truckers on the list. It's a it's a little while before Star Truckers, yeah? Or Star Trucker. Uh, exclamation Nessa, wishlist Star Trucker now. Um, it's actually, I've been trying to think of like what else is dropping this year, but I don't know, I guess if I stop and think about it, there must be some bangers. I'm just... Even with keeping up with all of the titles dropping at the moment, there's so much good stuff. So much good stuff. Cold Angle's looking forward to Dawnsbury Days. Uh, that sounds like a bit. Like a good bit. It sounds like a bit. Uh, Kessler's interested in Millennia. Alright. I guess, uh, I think it's just called Sand. Which is a terrible name, but that's one of the ones that I'm definitely looking forward to. Okay, let's get rid of this horrible cab yellow. It's kind of going for like a weird, like, Simpsons mobile thing going on, but. Change the chassis for. There we go. Oh, that one's missing a. Alright, that's missing a headlight. Oh, lovely! Uh, sorry, uh, Naru finally got the chance to pick up Chance of Sanar. I just made it to the, uh, to area three. Oh yeah, no, and uh, Fearless, you're entirely correct. That's the great thing about getting the uh, the red paint unlocked, is it does just make the car go faster. Yeah! Well, I'll keep that stripe there, but... This isn't your dad's car. Well, actually, at this point, it really is. Look at that. Uh, should probably make a new... Do, do I have a, a steel door? Stashed over here? I do. And I have a headlight. i feel pretty smug about that, I'm not going to lie. Aperture Science called, they want their 1,970 IS styling back. Well, uh, top titties. They're gonna have to wait. Look at that! 
<laughs> I don't know why I love it so much. Yeah. God, this looks like homebrew dad's best disaster. Oh yeah, Dustin, you know what? We haven't even talked about sleight of hand. I forget which of my industry friendos are involved with that one, but it looks it does look like sleight of hand uh, sorry, sleight of hand looks like uh what if we took uh dishonored and merged it with um hand of fate that was it That's a good point. Do we have many flares left over? I know we picked up loads early on. Could get expanded lockers. Ah, we see we need unstable energy for rapid refill. Oh, we've got everything for the advanced workbench except for unstable energy. Which I don't know if we've even worked out where to get that. Deco vendor uh, will ex reward you in exchange for anchor energy. That's pretty cool. But again, we need unstable for that. I don't think I've encountered an unstable area. We've countered the corrupt, and that seems to pop off once the klaxon sound. So I guess with corrupt energy, it's all about grab it and just fucking run. Here we can get, again, carbon fiberglass. We need unstable energy. Light replacement kit. Magna hammer thermal energy. Anchor radar. I feel like that's not something we've needed so far. So reusable flare, flare, crude flashlight. Hmm. We've got seven uh, stable energy, so we can research quite a lot of stuff right now. Hell, we might be getting towards the end of what we can actually get with stable energy need. Give or take. Mm. You know what? Well, one, uh, I need to take a little bathroom break. Let's turn on some tunes. Check out our sweet fucking ride. Uh, I can stop being paranoid about what's going on. Um... I think what I'll do is I'll make some steel panels to replace anything that's busted and go from there. I think that's the play. Rather than using putty, the, the putty needs to be saved for things we either can't replace or things in the field. Right, we haven't even gotten to a, a run where we got more than we could take back. I don't know if you've noticed, friends, this game kind of has its hooks in me. I don't know if this is uh, evident. Aww. Thank you, friendly dumpster. Uh, 
Right, bathroom break. I'm gonna get some water as well. And then let's let's have a little natter. And I think I've got like one more good run in me. Um, I often forget how much game there is to this. And it's like, we've been going for five hours. NBD. Oh, yeah. I have to say thank you to Floydo for bringing over a fuckload of people. I've often said, like, I'll keep playing this for as long as you'll... You'll <laughs> put up with stuff. Fiona might have engaged with alien forces. You know what? Let me hold that thought. I'll be back when you want in just a second.
Okay. Hello, hello. So sorry for the wait, friends. Uh, honestly, that last run just fucking drained me. We're definitely going to keep going. I'm going to do another run, but that last one was spicy. Uh, to Trista Twister, Lato and welcome. Uh, I see Angelos is already answered your questions. Um, but lovely to make your acquaintance. Lato and welcome. Uh... Gameplay wise, we're currently at the find our way through the wall, and it's kind of striking me that maybe we got, maybe we should make a move for that, you know? So we got. Just kind of uh, stashing our stuff and getting ready, and maybe that's what we should do next, but I was going to take a little bit of a time while we get in the car ready to just chat with you lot and hang out for a little bit, you know?
sorry, says I'm going to come on over and start talking, uh, immediately uh, stops talking. I'm sorry, friends. I, uh... In case it's not chronically obvious, I'm thoroughly enjoying this game. Although I feel like a dingus because I'm replacing these parts now, and... After we used all the paint and decals, but it's fine. We knew that was going to happen. Uh, steel bomb will be coming another one off. Uh, and yeah, so uh, to Trista, we have a few people uh, chilling and dealing with us who did work on this. I think Angelos is uh, the main one, Shan, who, uh, as they were saying, they worked on UI design, uh, sorry, UI design and some of the visual elements of this game. So, heckin' yeah. That back bump can barely need to appear in. Let's have a look at the map real quick before we start making the plans. Uh, see, that's where we need to go. The thing is... Plus side, if we head out this way, uh, that's a stable area. But like this place is in extreme conditions, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. No, I have absolutely done it. I have done that thing where I said I was going to come back and talk your ear off, and I have done nothing of the sort. Um, <laughs> God, maybe I... Maybe I don't have another run in me. Maybe I maybe I sit here defeated. Perhaps I have been I have been stopped. No! I will not admit defeat. We've got we've got one more ride in us. But All right, I'll tell you what, I'll do you, uh, I'll do you a halfway house, friends. We'll get the car up and running, get it fully repaired, and then we can make a call. I'm definitely not ready to make a run on, like, the next story B. Like... But we can do oh and I can also diagnose that other one, which is when hood is closed, uh dome light switches on. Three out of four is Okay. I thought dome light was the one in the the in trunk. Oh it could be toggles. There we go. Uh, so when hood is closed, dome light, that requires a light replacement and mechanic kits. We can fix that if we wanna. Car moves backwards, hood opens. We need an electronic kit, which we can't make. And there's one other thing which we haven't noticed. So yeah, maybe we could do a little run as a treat. And see Lost Flowers, honestly, my sleep stuff doesn't really anything to do with you lot. Per se. Sorry, I don't. Sorry, I don't mean to be like. Psh, to help me sleep, get fucked. It's it, more a case of like. 
like everybody, I've got a lot of worries these days. And my body has not been playing nice with sleep. And especially throughout lockdown, I've definitely become, for lack of a better word, dependent on uh, getting a few bevies in me to get a decent night's sleep. That's not good. That's not good. Don't do what Will does. Let's see if there's space in here to stash this one as well. Honestly, it's just been like, uh, it's just like emotional exhaustion in the last few days. It's it's definitely been a fucking roller coaster. God, I wonder if we can get something that's basically like a car repair station. That would be fucking rad. Sorry, Naru Hoodie, I didn't mean to, to put that on you. Anyway, uh, moving on, moving on. Oh, there is also that flip side of kind of lacking a better analogy of being the, the toddler that doesn't want to go to bed. I don't want to stop playing this. This game is fucking brilliant. And that last run alone, that should have been, that should have been a cakewalk for babies, right? You know, we knew where we were going. We weren't going to any stressful areas. <laughs> Bacon, <laughs> have you visited your dumpster recently? Let's see what the friendly dumpster has for us. Now we have. I guess we can grind some of this stuff while we're having a little now. More raw resources can't hurt, right? Perhaps I have reached the capacity of how much I can stream this today. But in my little heart of hearts, I'm like, no, I can keep going. You know what I mean? But like, we haven't progressed the story at all, and I've had a brilliant time. Okay, so... Angelos, I understand what you're saying. I meant more in terms of like, we're not doing story beats and I didn't go to any of the areas that had like the risky, the risky shit, you know what I mean? This game is something feckin' special, and it actually does do the thing that most games talk about, or talk about advertising, which is, you know, it makes your player, like, it, makes, it gives your player a, a risk-reward kind of feeling, you know, are they gonna stick around and fight, or are they gonna risk it for a biscuit? And there have been a lot of games that claim to have that as a feature, but very few that kind of deliver on it, and this one actually is doing that, which I find gloriously wild.
well, at least as it felt for me, like, the times where I have gotten uh, obliterated, it didn't... It, I didn't get that feeling of, like, uh, my ego getting harmed. It was more a case of, like, I care about this vehicle, as, as silly as that is to say out loud. And I don't like the idea of it getting... Oh, that means the boot's open. I don't like the idea of the car getting hurt. You know, it's very much succeeding in that that base building style. But it's it's intense in a good way. You know, I often felt like with runs of Hades, you come off that and you're like, oh boy, that sure was charming. Oh, I wonder if I've got time for another. Oh. Oh, that might be fun. In this, I'm just like... I'm trained. In a good way. I don't know, I've just... Uh, Angelos, I'm sure you've suffered the same thing of listening to a bunch of armchair... I don't know we should call it armchair designers, but AAA designers being like, in our game, you know, players have to make a calculated decision between risk and reward. No, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> I, I understand that was the idea in your design and that's how it feels on paper, but no, they don't. This feels like one of those genuine situations. And a lot of the pure survival games, I personally feel, don't have that risk-reward. Because the sponginess between failure usually means that if you fail, you're gone. You know... Right, GG Nori. Okay. So, we now know how to make a turbo light engine. However, we need buttloads of crystals. We don't have those yet. Uh, the limb pulse emitter. Uh, it's a calibrated device capable of discharging randomly timed electromagnetic pulses. The generator makes it extremely difficult for most organic and electromagnetic entities to hold on to harm the vehicle. That's an anti-rabbit, anti-winch wanker device. We need that. We need that. Sorry, I just wanted to articulate off of what Andres was saying, that it feels different when your character is moaning about needing food versus your precious baby car needing some love. Yeah, but also the sponginess of, like, between damage and destruction. I've One of the things I have really disliked is... Ev I forget which game brought it into the mainstream, but ever since the whole, like, food, water, sleep meters, I've always hated those. Because at least in my humble opinion, they don't feel like they add a grounding for the character. It feels like they add a bunch of predetermined timers that don't really make a lot of sense. Um, we were talking a lot about Final Fantasy yesterday, and one of the things that I love about Final Fantasy XV is that you are not forced... To feed, you are not forced to feed your characters. You're not forced to make them sleep. But when they get a good night's sleep in a good place and have a decent meal, they're better the next day. You know? Um. Oh, no, and to Dreamer, I'm not hating on it. If, if you're enjoying it, like, and it's not something that doesn't work in all games. I think it's things like Valheim where... the more that you have maintained your character, the more bonuses, rather than if you don't do this, they keel over. I don't know. I mentioned it earlier while we were driving, and then a whole bunch of shit happened, but Escape from Tarkov is a bad game. And there are loads of things that it does very, very bad. The reason I talk about it is because the shooty gun bang is best in the business. And if you mod the shit out of it, you can play it single player, and it's awesome. But that's another story. Um, 
one of the things that I despise about it is that it gives a hyper-realistic focus, except for the fact that if your character doesn't eat enough food in half an hour, they'll fucking die. So why go for such a heavy focus on realism if your character's got basically like a high-speed wasting disease? It doesn't... Why put that in there other than to add just another meter? It doesn't add any gameplay functionality because it's a game where you can very rarely bank on things being in specific places, so you can't plan. In this, if you go out there without enough fuel, that's bad. But you can plan to siphon gas as you're going through. You know there's going to be cars or maybe a gas station if you're lucky. It's still a gamble, but there's a plan through. You know? Uh, the Dreamer says, so what if the meter burned based on how much you were doing? Uh, I think it's the finality of it. The idea that when the snack meter reaches zero, your character just goes, Hah! And if the goal is to emulate the experiences, um, or an, emulate... The, the interesting parts of realist experience how do you take those elements and make them complement the experience rather than detract oh it's your angelos thank you the long dark that is a great example of how to do like food heat meters well because that's the core of the experience that's what you're fighting against rather than something that is a detractor from doing the thing you want to do. And maybe that's maybe that's the resonance that this is here. Everything that it comes to in terms of repair and survival is all about your car. The car you're supposed to be obsessed with. You know? Uh, Naru, yes, the Long Dark does it great. But that's because the thing it says off the get-go is you have crash-landed in the... You've crash-landed in Alaska. Survive. Right? It's not you've crash-landed in Alaska, there's a super-secret facility up ahead with a villain that's going to destroy the world with a super laser. Go. Uh, Kestrel, my car talks to me. Does yours not talk to you? Um, and Dustin, so Oxygen Not Included is a very, very good example of when those elements complement. Although, the food, water, sleep meters are about your little clones, and they add a level of... The thing with Oxygen Not Included is that even when it's not working, it's very funny. I don't know. I basically, if you want the most egregious example of like misplaced meters, it's um, We Happy Few. Nobody wanted that game to be a survival game. What they wanted was the the narrative promised. The, the marketing assets put forward said, hey, this is a story game where you play as a character in this insane reworking of the prisoner. And what we got was a survival game. Hmm. And I think that's where another one where Green Hell, Green Hell is also about how horrific the jungle actually is. It's called Green Hell for a reason, you know. That game doesn't just have you managing food, sleep, water. You're right. You have like your carbs and proteins and fats, but there's also like you'll have to pull leeches off yourself and you know avoid gangrene and the horrible shit that can happen to you in a tropical environment. Um, a good example of it misplaced is definitely Scum. Uh, the Devolver Digital... Um, it's a survival game. It's a survival game where you play essentially like Running Man style contestants. You've been sent into this place to just either murder or get murdered. But... It has a full system that takes count of like what nutrients and vitamins you're getting with your diet. And <sighs> I 
<laughs> Sorry. Kessler was just saying that they enjoy green hell, but the protagonist gets pissed off at every little thing and whinges constantly. I'm with the dreamer on this one. That's realistic. I would be whingy. Now, I'd admit, if I made a game about me getting lost in the jungle, I would admit all of the whinging. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't tell you. However, they would need to balance it out with a large amount of just nonsense jingle singing to cope with the stress of it all. I make up little songs when I'm either tired, stressed, or down. I'm sure the neighbours fucking love that when I'm taking the dogs out. It's either that or singing the Taco Bell, Taco Bell, product placement, Taco Bell. <laughs> I amused myself. Now, the Dreamer, one thing that I'd love to do is with those kind of survival games. Because, I'm oh, sorry, the Dreamer was saying that that's very, very interesting because in survival, a lot of it hinges on being able to cope mentally, not give up, not just stop. I think that putting 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 systems into those games which is about managing mental health could be more interesting uh, to Dreamer I'm trying to remember Vintage Story I am drawing a blank Uh, I did not know it. It looks like a... Okay, so it's a standalone Minecraft mod. Okay, that makes me feel better. Sorry. <laughs> and Blue Doom, what and welcome. Uh, we're just having a little bit of a banter break. Um, the last run we did of this was fucking intense and really good, but like, I'm I'm exhausted right now, so we're just having a natter about survival games. And like, I'm not trying to logic trap anybody into my thinking on this. What I'm trying to put forward is that adding those kinds of elements, if they're not in service of, if they're not in service of the themes. And you've got to ask yourself, like, why are you adding them, right? Now, for something that the primary experience of it is surviving, surviving in the wilderness, surviving in the jungle, surviving in, you know, Minecraft, I don't know, those things can certainly add to it. With Subnautica, food and water is used as an early hurdle to overcome that you then put to one side. And um, again, I'm, I am just uh, using this as an excuse to, to shit on Tarkov. Uh, Tarkov's food and hi energy and hydration they have is fucking terrible. Now, there's some things it does that are kind of funny, but you only get the opportunity to do these things and not die immediately if you are already incredibly, in terms of that game's economy, very wealthy. So, like... I once accidentally drank an entire tin of condensed milk, which dehydrated my guy so close he nearly died. Thankfully, I had a bottle of water so I could just chug that. But my character was already at the point where I had the money and the storage pace to have a full bottle of clean water, which is very expensive. Now, what's funny about that one is that my character then got a thumping headache from the sugar rush and the dehydration that there's then countered. So I was just like, oh, what? Oh, this is the worst! Kind of like eating a bag of Skittles to yourself on an empty stomach and then having a worse time. That's funny. But ultimately, that's a system in a game about Shooty Gunbang. And Shooty Gunbang that never takes longer than an hour. Right? We're put in a situation where we're supposed to believe, like, okay, this isn't. This is very realistic. Except for the fact that if you don't drink water every 15 minutes, you're fucking dead. Now, should you drink water on the regular? Yes, you should. Hail hydrate. Hydrate or die straight. K 
can you go for several days drinking nothing but coffee and beer? Yes. Should you? No. God, no. But you could. Now, Holy Bus, uh, Angelos, is this one of those things where I'm going to trunk myself and then realise that I can die in here? Absolutely could bash yourself in the nugget. Now, we can just heal by going over here, so we're fine, but if I wanted to, I could smash my own face into death with this door. Blue dude, you go several days drinking nothing but coffee, side eyes the LARPers. Yup. Now, do we want to see what happens if I beat myself to death with a car door here, or...? <laughs> do you eat? Alright. Let's see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't fuck everything, but if it does, challenge mode. You haven't knocked yourself unconscious? Okay, so you can't you can't push yourself past death. You can get the worst case of rust eye. But you can't die. Okay, Ludo, before you ask, this is for science. <laughs> Let me stumble my concussed ass over to the first aid station. Okay. So you can't die in here. That's good. Uh, Ludo, how was your stream? What were you up to? Tell me your tales. What? Oh, and welcome! Uh, Raptosaurus, lovely to see you. Uh, we were just talking about survive, like the old uh, food, water, sleep meters in video games, when they work and when they don't. Um, I, I, I've talked about this one a lot, but Project Zomboid's another good one where it does work. Well, did you hear the awful manga-related news? Uh, I didn't. Do I want to? Like... Is this something we need to know about? Uh, so Peter, what and welcome. Uh, we were catching Pokemon, uh, demon Pokemon, in 1905 Warsaw. What the heck? Oh, Thumeridge. I, I don't know if that's. I don't know if I'd call it Pokemon, but there we go. Well, I hope you've been enjoying it. I've been seeing that one cross my feed pre-stream. Ah, oh, sorry, not pre-stream. God, my brain. I've been seeing that one cross my feed a lot with uh, uh, PR emails and the ilk, so I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's turned out real good. Uh, there was actually a Persona game where you... Well, a Shin Megami Tensei game where you caught demons and battled them. But... Uh, well, I don't know if that was something I desperately wanted to know right now. Uh, apparently Akira Toriyama has passed away. Oh, well that fucking sucks. <sighs> Raptosaurus, thank you for the follow. Sorry about that. Uh, well... What I will say is that Sandland is coming soon, and that is absolutely going to slap. And no person is truly gone whose name is remembered. I'll say that much. Oh. Um, fuck. Oh. 
Let's paint this fucking car. I've still got a few, uh, a few fun decals left. She would have painted the back of it uh, bright orange. That was a good choice. <sighs> there we go. Nice and visible. <sighs> anyway. Nothing to be doing about it. Nothing to be doing about it. <sighs> I'm sorry, Ludo, you brought everybody in and then we kind of got the... I swept the leg there a little bit. Um, but jumping back, jumping back. So we've been on this mostly today. Um, this continues to be fucking brilliant. And honestly, I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time with it. Um... I think I've kind of hit the, I think I've definitely hit the wall. I was kind of, I was trying to summon up the energy to keep going, but, man, what is it, what? Sometimes not sharing bad news is okay. Fuck. <sighs> anyway, surviving in the car. Um, one of the things we've been talking about with this is the sponginess of the survivability in it and how both your... Because your base and your companion and your vehicle for exploration is one and the same. It's a multi-component stage element, so it becomes... There's a lot more choice that you can make in the field as whether or not to go for more goodies or whether or not to continue. Um... I'm just kind of breaking that down. Um, one of the things I've been talking a lot about, I guess this year, is games where the failure state is nice and spongy. That it's not an immediate, like, well, you done fucked up, get out. Um, where you can make educated choices, where things aren't instantaneous. And, I don't know, I think every title that takes another step away from that post Call of Duty obsessive, like everything must be happening every second. You know, everything must be in service of this non stop daka 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 is something that I definitely support. And it might just be where I'm at in terms of the games that I enjoy spending time with and showing you all. Like, for example, we spend a lot of time on Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves is brilliant because for the most part, you can make an educated choice on whether or not to engage and fight somebody. It's possible to be jumped on. It's possible to be ambushed. And when those happen, it's kind of funny. There's also the stakes in Sea of Thieves are very low. Because you can never get into a situation where you lose things that you can't get back. You can never be in a situation where somebody is just better equipped than you. Uh, once again, Tarkov's a garbage game. And the reasons being, that can absolutely happen. You can encounter somebody, you can have the drop on them, and they can just have better kit. And so, so long. And the flip side being is it's almost impossible to tell when that situation is happening. The only thing you can really judge in Tarkov is the size of somebody's backpack. If they have a great big backpack that looks like it was bought from an expensive camping shop, that's probably a player. Otherwise, it could just be an NPC. But that NPC could also be a player. You know? You can't make an educated guess. So, yeah. Yeah, Ludo, if someone manages to ambush you in Sea of Thieves, that's a good play. And, I don't know. The extra time I've been spending with uh, Tarkov single player has definitely allowed me another go at really breaking down what's good and bad about it. The reason why it continues to succeed as a commercial product is because it's the only gig in town. And it's got some of the best gun handling in any shooty gun bang. Like, it really hits that point where... 
it it has all the realistic elements, but it's also fun. What are, so cold ankles. What are some examples of like spongy failure? Because the circling the drain problem is a hard one to avoid. But I don't know. I've encountered a lot of games where. All right, let me let me rephrase that thought. Frostpunk is at its most boring when you're succeeding, and you need a little bit of failure in that spongy failure state to get some flavor. Do you know what I mean? Because in some of the states where it feels like it's spongy failure, but you're doomed, I think the the faults there are definitely... I think the faults there are definitely a design in another way. Uh, no, actually, Ludo, you're right. XCOM can be a really good example of that one. And I guess it's because I kind of forgot about all of the early campaigns of XCOM I played, the ones where it went wrong. Because I kind of, I found my biting point. Uh, Dak, Watto, and welcome. Uh, if you like survival games and you like cars, into the right place. But you're right. XCOM, I, I definitely got into a couple of stodgy failure states in the, the first of the newer XCOMs where the overall terror was too high. I couldn't get people strong, like trained up quick enough. And then, so later on, I learned that always, always have one strong character in reserve where possible because one strong character and a group of newbies can do wonders. Whereas a group of newbies might as well just be a lost cause once you get past a certain point. Because once they start implementing um, like things like the orbs and uh, some of the late stage, oh, I forget what they're called, mutoids. Like, there's, there's nothing you newbie recruits can do against them. But orb. Big orb. It's either a laser or it's a problem. <laughs> and XCOM orb ponders you. Oh, the fucking cyber discs and then some. Well, so to Dreamer, make sure you're not falling into the same trap that I have, which is forgetting what it was like to encounter those. I guess the thing that um, Ludo has put forward is kind of a reminder of what it was back in the day. <sighs> like, I had forgotten what it was like to play XCOM, the newer XCOMs, and lose. Because, yeah, you can get yourself into a state where you just can't bring it back. Um, and so Ludo, Darkest Dungeon 1, I think its fault is it doesn't do as good a job of conveying progression even through failure. It's... Darkest Dungeon 1's intended message is almost too highbrow, Right? Uh, okay, I'm sure you all know this, but just for context, Darkest Dungeon 1 is about you becoming a monster, right? It is you losing your humanity, not as a player, but as the organizer. Uh, sorry, not as a character, but as the player. Um, sorry, let me rephrase that. You never put your life in danger as the person you play as in Darkest Dungeon. You send adventurers to their deaths. And in Darkest Dungeon, the best way to proceed is just to get people fucking repeatedly killed. You know? The best move early on is to turn out the light, hoard resources. If they go mad, fuck them. And that's what it's trying to make you do. And the narrator will say as much to you. The reason you've been handed this is to twist you into the next monster. 
you are not you you do not fight yet your actions are monstrous the problem is you gotta really be paying attention early on otherwise it does just feel like losing a lot we are so uh, Dak if you turn the lights out the amount of like uh, resources that you find and uh, other gains skyrockets but the mental strain it takes on your cast of characters goes way up. But here's the thing. They're your first round of people. They're expendable. You're no, they're not going to be the people you're fighting side by side with, you know, in 15, 20 hours time. So yeah. Now I haven't spent much time with Darkest Dungeon 2 and from what I've heard Darkest Dungeon 2 is trying to do its own thing. <laughs> well, like, you're not wrong for trying to keep those people alive, right? But how much fucking harder is it? I like saying like it it feels really bad to go through a dungeon and lose a person. Like how many characters can you lose before you stop feeling that loss? I don't know, just Darkest Dungeon does some really subtle things in what it's trying to say. Uh, I don't want to spoil the ending for it in case any of you really do want to go through it, and it is worth it, but yeah. Ultimately, what it's saying artistically is that this is this is how good people turn evil. <laughs> and anyway, I love that kind of shit. We're, and Ludo, again, narratively, the game kind of backhands you with almost, did you did you think these people were invincible now? See, at least with the XCOM games, once characters reach a certain tipping point, they're unstoppable god killers. You know, honestly, the only reason why you end up having two teams is that your A team has to rest at some point. And I don't know if you all ended up with the same thing, but for me... All of my successful XCOM campaigns, I have two teams, and they work in fucking rotation with each other. They can't be stopped. And that's cool. Like, that empowerment feels good. Early on in XCOM, especially XCOM 2, you are the guerrilla force. Uh, sorry. You're the guerrilla force in XCOM 2, but you're the weaker force. The, the individuals you go up against, you know, they are... Aliens from the planet Zog. They have super beam weapons and plasma grenades and all sorts of nonsense. You are just some guys who have gone through the, uh, the military industrial complex. And as the game progresses, you learn, you adapt, you create, you craft, and you overcome. And I would say is that from the classic XCOMs, XCOM Apocalypse is also one worth looking at because that had the whole, like, you're trying to protect a whole city, not a planet, which means that structural damage, fires, and uh, insurgents are more of a worry. But that's not a story. <sighs> God, I love talking about this stuff. Um... And I guess it's one of the things where 4X games also struggle, that in a lot of those titles, you can kind of get yourself on a back foot, and without knowing it, you're, you're doomed. But this is where we have to bring up Stellaris, because that's the one that got it fucking right. Stellaris is a story generator. Even if you lose in Stellaris, you have a great time.
Oh no, Kestrel, you'll have a great time with it. I forget what happened to uh, Agent Kestrel when we did our playthrough, but... Oh, I was just seeing if there was a uh, a photo mode in uh, uh, in the garage. I'm just uh, I'm grabbing a couple of snaps while we're uh, having a natter, you know, because uh, I'm kind of proud of this. I can see like um, Ben and other folks getting the resources to get make like a like a pseudo Ecto One kind of setup. Agent Kestrel died very quickly. I'm sorry. So I tell you what, friends. I uh, I apologise for losing steam. Um, but I think it's you know we've done we've done six hours, done some really good fucking runs. We've got two armored doors that I stole. <laughs> um. And looking at that map, like, oh boy. Like, I, I don't think I've got it in me. Oh, but that one's fucking good. Maybe we could do one more run. What do you say? Uh... You know it's a good game, but you don't want to stop playing. Okay. I have definitely hit the, the limits on my conversational skills. And we have lots of stuff going on. So, um, tomorrow will be Sea of Thieves, dear friends. Uh, hopefully, touch wood. Touch wood. Uh, we have uh, uh, Tommy Thompson joining us from uh, the AI and video games. Uh, YouTube! Who has been... No, Angelo's. I, I, uh, I, I know what will happen. I'll, I'll binge this for another two hours, and I'll just be monosyllabically drooling out of one side of my mouth. Um. <laughs> so yeah, we have a cool guest pirate on tomorrow. Uh, and fearless, I will. I'll do my darndest, but uh, Tommy sits on that uh, intersection between dickheads that think that generative AI is the new hotness and people that actually understand its applications. Uh, okay, sorry. If you haven't seen Tommy's stuff, he does this YouTube series of AI and video games, which is predominantly about like NPC AI things that we talk about in that space, but. Uh, he does also do like some very, very level-headed breakdowns of generative AI technology and how it's used in games. And the few the handful of, re uh, of resources for which it is useful or good, and the majority of them being fucking terrible. You know, that's, uh, that's his wheelhouse. And he's also a good mate of mine from back in the UK, so I'm partially looking forward to, to talking the good stuff partially looking forward to just sinking a couple of bevies with a friend. And also you lot are there. So that's what tomorrow's looking like. Um, on Saturday, I currently have the Black Watchmen in. But I might... I might sneak in some more of this. Uh, however, um, what I will say is we're doing something special Saturday night. Uh, we're going to be doing a screening of Indie Game the Movie over on Discord. Uh, yes, you did hear that right. Indie game, the movie. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't make ourselves some cocktails and talk about tales of yesteryear. Uh, I'm going to be inviting uh, a couple of people to kind of be like guest MS3TK snarkalons. So, it should be good fun. Uh... Angelos, uh, it'll be... It'll definitely start earlier than this. Evening Pacific. And Wheeler Dealer, Watto and welcome. But, friends, um... 
I need to roll credits. And I will definitely pass your lovely selves onto one of the myriad of lovely individuals. Because we are absolutely spoilt for choice. Oh, though one of my friendos is actually playing the long dark right now. Uh, my, I think that's the shout. Okay. Um, friendos, I hope you've all had a splendid day. I apologise that uh, between uh, game momentum and bad news uh, that we kind of lost steam towards the end. But up until then, it's been a fucking great day, so absolutely thank you. Okay? Um, I mean, it's been a fucking... It's been a bizarre week, but better than I could have hoped, you know? I don't have to dive in with sharks, which I'm very grateful for, but there was a time when I started to worry. I won't lie. I won't lie. Um, you know, just thank you. I'm glad you all enjoyed watching this, because I'm still obsessed with playing it. I'm still having the fucking best time. So, thank you. And it's a nice thing to say that when a run is so good that you end up just being so tired that you've got to kind of bring it to a close. That's a, that's a hell of a compliment. Okay. Right, uh, as I said, I can't think of anything else. Let me say my thank yous. Um, because for those of you that don't know, like, this is what's keeping us going. Like... This stream is the biggest way that we're able to pay our rent, stay alive, keep kicking. Wait, where are the credits? Boop. What do you mean credits broken? Oh my. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna get grumpy. I'm gonna be a grumpy will. Well now, all right. Bear with me a second. Gonna set this. Gonna set this fucking stuff off manually. <laughs> I don't, Jamami. Thank you. All right. Like I've said this before, but you know, without you lot, I'm just a bloke yelling at himself. Tragically by himself. Okay, yes, I see that. We haven't had any power outages, we haven't had any problems. <laughs> it's been all it's been going too well this last couple of days. You've all been too fucking brilliant. Hey, I fixed it. <laughs> All right, but I do mean it, friends. Without you lot, I'm just a person yelling incoherently in a teeny tiny room. And I really, really appreciate it, friends. Uh, to Raptor Russ, uh, Trista Twister, and the variable system, thank you kindly for the follows. Come on by, let's talk about stuff sometimes. You fucking cool kids. To Shackle Draconis, Relu, Hookshot, OC Diversions. Fuck you guys. Uh, Angel Kalina, Naru Hoodie, and Playframe Plus. Whether or not you were gifting a gift at a sub or celebrating the full 65 months, fucking thank you. House card, you know who you are. To J Post, uh, Akira Zero, Scotty Doggy, Bacon Avenger, Some Numbers, Fearless Sun, Pun Spectre, Occult Game Dev, Holy Bus Crusader, Shackle Draconis, 
Eremon, Favor Six, Yeti, dust in your eyes. Geographic. Geographic! Oh no! Scottish! Scotland! Yeah. Sorry. Geographic. Asari Greenfire. Van Beast and Naru Hoodie. Again, bits and donations are what keep us alive, so I'm so grateful. Thank you to the whole mod team, not just Caffeine, but Lizzie T. Pow and Rhymes and Moose. And to Ludo History and Playframe Pass. Floydo himself! Fucking thank you for the raids, alright? Like, it's a big, big fucking compliment. I really appreciate that. So, I am going to take you over to my friend Nels. Uh, now, Nels has played an unholy amount of The Long Dark. So if you want to talk about, like, implementation of survival mechanics and games and how that game absolutely heckin' slaps. Alright, I can't recommend somebody better. Plus, Nels is currently only kicking around with five people, so we can bring the thunder. We can bring the thunder. I'd always like that, you know? I'd always like that. Right, friends. I don't think I've got anything else to add. Uh, I hope you all have yourselves a fucking splendid rest of your day. Um, I'll see you tomorrow for Rampant Piracy, and I'll see you Saturday for Rampant Indie Dev the Movie. <laughs> uh, right. Friends, Vikings, and Miscreants. To be continued. <laughs> a good eve. Oh, that's right.